And we are live. What's going on, everybody? Let me get this quick out of the way here. Let me know if you can hear me. Say, yes, we can hear you and see you, please. Uh, because last week, I thought, you'd think after a year and a half, maybe even longer now of streaming, that I would know how to make sure my camera's on and that I hit go live. But last week, I was talking to myself for like 10 minutes and had to repeat everything. So I want to make sure, OK, all right, everyone can see and hear me. Awesome. I normally don't check that because it's not necessary, but after last week, I've questioned my uh, abilities. Um, I hear a notification. Inappropriate. Thank you very much for the $6.90 donation. I don't see the donation uh, alert box. Let me see if I go refresh here. Why did that not work? Uh, also, chat is on screen. We haven't had chat on this scene ever, I don't think. Everyone, every week, someone says, hey, there's no chat on this scene. So chat's on this scene. I also updated chats. Now there's a, uh, a black sort of semi-transparent background. So hopefully you can see it better. So if we go like side view now, it pops a bit more. So hopefully this is going to make everybody happy. Um, let me really quickly see if I just got the alerts working. I don't know why it didn't work for inappropriate. I heard it, I didn't see it. So let me see if I refresh it now. Still don't see it. I think I need, I think I know what I need to do. Alert box is too far down. You should be up here. Yeah, there it is. Okay, I got it working. So awesome. So chat, yes, chat is better. Um, I, I have been saying for a month I was going to put chat on here and fix the background and I keep not doing it. So I finally just said today is the day. Um, some exciting stuff. So uh, I was hoping this would be set up by today's stream, uh, but it's not, but we've got, Look at that, that is a uh, ceiling mounted camera. So the only issue is that I need a 20 foot HDMI cable that isn't arriving till today and the uh, dummy battery power cable is not long enough. So I also ordered a 10 foot um, like expansion for that. So by next week, we should also have an overhead camera, which I am super excited about. Uh, it's just going to be really, really nice. Um, also, I saw somebody asked about building a VZBot. Uh, we are, I've mentioned it a few times, but we are building a VZBot. So um, Mello, Mello is basically, Mello and another provider is sponsoring two VZBot kits, one for me and one for Steve, Steve Builds. Um, and we are going to be doing a collaboration stream starting very soon. I don't have the exact date yet, but we both have tracking. So like we are getting very, very close. Uh, and as soon as I've got more info, Matthew, thank you very much for the gifted membership. Cheers. Um, so yeah, as soon as we've got info um, that Steve is cool with me sharing and we've agreed to on a little bit more details, then I will share it. But it's getting closer, so be prepared hopefully in the next week or so to get some more information. Um, so, uh, did I see the X1 on the floor? No, um, there's a lot of printers on the floor. Um, the 2.4 is right here next to me on the ground uh, because I don't have a table in here poured on and I'm still doing some um, doing some tweaking as far as like, uh, initial calibrations and stuff like that. Anyways, how is everybody doing today? Uh, today is an exciting day. We are starting a new build. Uh, we're going to be building this for at least a couple of weeks and then we might have to pivot to the VZ build because it's a collabor collaboration between me and Steve. And so I will either do an additional stream for this or it'll go on standby just for a few weeks while me and Steve are doing our build. I'll, I'll figure it out. But today we're building the Trident. Uh, this is a kit that was sent over from Cyborg and I was just checking on their, um, so they have, their official website is uh, more together now than it was when I checked two months ago or three months ago. So um, this is the specific kit. It's a 300 millimeter um, Cyborg Trident. Uh, the price is 919 on this website because this website has free shipping. If you go on their AliExpress, it's I think 699, but you pay that 220 in shipping. So that's why uh, that's why the price is more on here. Um, we are building it stock for the kit. So um, it has a Dragon High Flow and we'll look at some of the parts today. Uh, the only thing we're gonna be doing differently is we're also going to be installing a uh, Voron tap. And so they had sent over a tap kit actually for the 2.4 and it just, I, I wanted to build a 2.4 stock from LDO. And so we're going to install it here. Um, Delmar, if you can tell me what revision this is, it was sent to me in the last two months. This is probably the piece, oh shoot. This is the piece that's probably going to let you know what version it is because it has those belt pieces. So let me know. Uh, the thing I need to find out though, so this the printed parts that came with this kit are black and blue and this is red. 
so I'm probably, even if I find out that this is ABS and not ABS plus, I'm still probably going to reprint this part so that way the tap is all black because I'm fine with the black and blue, but black, blue, and red just starts to look a little bit, <laughs> a little bit like there's no plan to the color scheme. Okay, so this is the first release. Okay, well that works then. I'll end up reprinting out the parts just in all black, like Polymaker, ASA, or ABS. Um, as far as the hardware, I know you mentioned magnets. Does anything else need to be changed? Because they sent over, um, they sent over the hardware kit, and I haven't looked through it yet. But I don't know if I need to source any additional parts that uh, through the different revisions. So. Let me know. I guess we're not there. It's not the latest. Latest is RC8. Okay. Yeah, we'll definitely do the latest. Um, it's the one I just built. Yeah, we'll definitely do the latest. Um, and then we're going to be comparing that to the CNC versions of TAP eventually here. But for this for this build, we're going to do um, the printed version. So I guess we'll just do a quick run through of what the kit comes with. I haven't actually looked through everything. I sort of just took it out of its initial box because it was huge and heavy and brought everything in here. So uh, I know that these are the printed parts. So uh, you have optional printed parts with our kit and they did send over everything. So it's going to be black and blue. It's a really nice, um, it's a really nice blue. So this is the stealth burner. Uh, and then, yeah, the rest of the primary parts are black. So we've got all those in here. They have um, they have the option to get... So the kit comes with all functional parts. And then you can pay extra if you want all of the, like, panel pieces, skirts, and the exhaust filter. They sent over everything. Um, but if you buy the kit the, at the price for $9.19 that has shipping, um, it's the functional printed parts. Magnets are good for magnets. RC8 is overkill. Got you. So you're saying don't do RC8 or go with RC8, but just do less magnets. I know that RC8 weighs more than the CNC versions. Like they beefed some stuff up. Um, so we've got more printed parts here. Again, this has, so this is the, um, this I guess is the added parts, which has all of the stuff that would be going down for the skirt, all of our uh, panel pieces, the exhaust filter, um, exhaust filter right here. Why did my music stop? Did Aaron, did Aaron put on Spotify somewhere else? Let me see. Uh, listening on iPhone. Yes, she did. Okay, let me switch to connect to device, this computer. All right, I think it's because she's in the car. She's taking my Spotify. <laughs> I'm going to call her. <laughs> Hold on. <clears throat> <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> hey, you're taking my music from my stream. I'm putting you on YouTube. Oh, well, it's your Spotify or something must be connecting to something because it keeps pulling away from the computer and going to a phone. Okay, here, let me. The chat wants the music. <laughs> everybody <laughs> it's okay i just noticed i'm like wait a minute my music cut out and then when i put it back on it went straight back to phone can you wait so i can't you can't pull it back i can but you need to close out of spotify if you if you're doing anything with spotify open it's pulling it from me to you okay yeah connect it automatically i'll, I'll exit it that way you should be able to yeah i can pull it back i just as long as it's disconnected we all love you i just wanted to call and let you know what was going on Okay. Um, we good? All right. Okay. Love you. <laughs> I love you too. Bye. <laughs> yeah, we need to get the family plan. <laughs> well, when I signed up for it initially, um, it was I only bought Spotify for stream music, and Erin had no interest in it. Uh, but now she has become accustomed to Spotify. So yeah, we probably <laughs> they probably need the family plan. Um, so yeah, this has all of the, uh, again, additional parts. So we are going to use, it's going to be black and blue, which wouldn't have been my choice as colors, but I don't mind them. And it's starting to sort of really grow on me as I've been looking at them. Um, yeah, so looking through the parts, the only, the purple is super cool. So the only purple I've ever seen is the purple I got with my LDO kit. And this is a completely different purple. It's way more, um, well, it's, the way I would describe it is a purple chrome. 
super, super shiny, uh, which is why I think the black and blue will be a nice contrast to it because if it was all really bright, it would be too much. Uh, but this is, yeah, this is an awesome, just incredibly shiny purple. Uh, I showed Erin, she, lo she loves it. So I'm very excited. Yeah, I, again, I would describe this as a chrome purple. So that's the, uh, that is the frame, uh, like clear anodized purple. Yeah, uh, she's, no, she's not driving. She, she's in the, she's in the, uh, she's in the driveway still. So, uh, we've got our, um, why are words, I'm so distracted right now that I can't even think about what our, what these connectors are called. Somebody, somebody tell me the name of these that we just used. Um, but here are our connectors for all of our electronics to mount them. I don't know why I can't think of what these are called right now. Din rails, thank you, easy word. Brain is still waking up. Yes, our din rails. In my defense, I've only used these, well, I guess I've used them twice now, so I don't really have an excuse. Uh, yeah, we used them on the the uh, Mercury, and we also used them on the 2.4, but for some reason, my brain. Anyway, so we got our DIN rails. Uh, something I'm a huge fan of, which I think so far, Cyborg is my favorite when it comes to hardware, is, um, so we, we typically use these, these little, like, screw organizers that I've designed, uh, and they're great, right? They're awesome, but we use them because the rails, or not the rails, the, the parts usually just come in little baggies, uh, but for the, hey, Gary, thank you very much for the membership. Um, hey, DJ, you got the membership. Thank you, Gary. Yeah, they use these for all of their hardware kits. So like the V0.2 came with it and this Trident came with it. It's just so freaking nice. Like everything is in baggies, yet it's in its own little slot and you've got nice little pictures. So to me, this is, this is sort of my new standard of like top tier hardware organization. I know Fabrico also, um, does this like the the mercury mercury 1.1 also came in a kit like this but yeah this is to me my favorite setup it's nicely organized nicely labeled and you got pictures so it's really really nice touch um, as someone that's very scatterbrained as we all know having things organization is key so it's just a really nice another reason love fabrico the kit uses tackle yeah it's such such a nice touch um hardware kits from cyborg are super organized yeah i love them so we have got we don't have a raspberry pi uh which has sort of become the standard you know given the last couple years here but we do have i'm gonna tear this i can't open it it's a very tight bag uh we do have an orange pie so i'm gonna try this out if i think that nice um i know that he built the cyborg 2.4 around the time i was doing the v0 and I think he's been using this quite successfully. I know he had to do one thing, like one change on it. I don't really uh, remember. Um, but yeah, we're going to give this a go and see how it works out. So you do get an orange pie, which is nice because again, um, pretty much no kits are coming with any form of pies unless it's a board that has something like the CB1 from Big Tree Tech. So we'll see how this goes. Um, Women from Raspberry Pi told me that they're making 1 million per month. Yeah, I know inventory is definitely getting better uh, because I've, I've seen Pi, Pi 4s at least primarily and the original Pi 0s. 2Ws I haven't seen very much of and Pi 3s I haven't seen very much of. Um, but yeah, Pi 4s I definitely see more. Oh, Rev Cs are now shipping with Pis. That's cool. That's good to know. Uh, you said you think it's an H6? Let me see if it says on here. Uh, probably on the back side. This says Pi 3 LTS 2G 8G. I don't see... I don't know how... I don't know the naming convention. You said... Uh, where, is it? where is your... Oh, H6. Yeah, yeah, H6 chip. Yep. Yeah, sorry. I was like, I don't know what the naming convention's like on these, but you can see the H6 glowing right there. So yeah, this will be fun to try out. Something something new. I've never used an orange pie. Definitely heard of them, you know, for a long time, but haven't used them. Uh, we've got our um, AC or power inlet switch all wired up. We've got it's probably an SSR. Uh, let's open this up. Uh, is this a, is that an orange pie five? I don't see a model number on it. Um, so I don't know. I don't have enough. I don't have enough experience with, I have no experience with orange pie, so I don't know definitively. Perhaps, um, yeah, perhaps Raheem knows the exact version. Yeah. So we've got our SSR. 
which is going to be for our AC heated bed. We don't need the box. I'll throw you over there. We've got, looks like, oh, this is not a power supply. I don't know what this is. This says, oh, 12864 RGB. So this is Uh, can't be a five. I mean, oh, it's an H6 chip, so it can't be. The board layout looked familiar. Uh, Pi three. It's. Hey, what's up, Rushmir? Uh, so here is our screen, which is a FISAC twelve eight sixty four panel art with RGB. Uh, so this is what came with my Switchwire kit. I do know Cyborg contacted me in the last week here, letting me know that they're updating the kits again. So. Um, I think that the 2.4 and the Trident are going to be shipping with screen, touchscreens, um, what did they say? Touchscreens, Big Tree TAC, uh, electronics, and there was at least one other change. Uh, but I do think there's going to be a slight price difference. I, I imagine it's going to go up in cost a little bit. They didn't give me the pricing because I asked um, what the price point would be with that because I just figured a touchscreen would cost more. Uh, so yeah, they are making some changes. I just don't know again what the pricing is going to be once they do that. Uh, oh, get the STM32 adapter for that display. Works great. Uh, still very competitive. Yeah, I imagine the price will be good. I love my Cyborg V0.2. Uh, just not a fan of the build plate and the hot end fan is always on. I'm in the process of building a V2.4 350 CNC. Nice. Um, I don't mind the build plate. What's wrong with your build plate? Like, you mean the heated bed itself? I haven't had an issue with that. Uh, and then we've got a mount for our uh, SSR on the DIN rail. The the board itself, um, the, oh gosh, um, I can never remember the name, the Fly Gemini V3. Um, it's an okay board. Like, it's pretty much meant for CAN boss in my opinion. There's just not enough IO, especially um, if you're planning on, why do I put this? Um, I'm gonna put this back in the closet. Well, we'll take off, here, let's do a few things here. We're gonna be using the rail. So let me take out the things I know we'll be needing. Um, the board, in my opinion, just doesn't have enough IO and it's like meant for CAN bus. And I actually spent quite a bit of time this last weekend trying to get CAN bus installed on it. And um, I had a ton of issues, um, a ton of issues. Uh, Ted, I reached out to Ted cause he's like, can bus Jesus. And uh, he gave me some input that helped a lot. I actually think that I might have had it working and just didn't realize it because I didn't realize that once it connects, the UUID doesn't show up anymore. So that was throwing me off. And then also there's a different flashing command than what I was using because it was, I was using Canbridge. Uh, so I'm going to try to get that working. I'm not going to be using it for the tutorial video that I initially had planned. Um, I'm gonna do a Canbridge video, but it's likely gonna be on the 2.4 uh, with the Big Tree Tech hardware because I think it's just more common hardware that is probably gonna be one, a bit easier, uh, but two, more applicable than some of the nuances that I ran into with the um, uh, Gemini board. So, uh, <laughs> Canvas Jesus. <laughs> yeah, um, the... Uh, Ted, Ted is like one of the first, well, G-Funny was probably one of the first people I knew that jumped on CAN bus, uh, but Ted has done just some wild stuff with it. So, uh, okay, so we got our rails. The X-Rail is going to be a, I think MGN, is it MGN 7 and the rest are MGN 9? Or that's not right. I don't, I haven't looked at the bomb. I know that it's the one rail that's different, uh, but the X-Rail is also a high wind rail, which is cool. So that's, that's fancy. When I opened the box up and saw that, I didn't realize that was the case. MGN 12, okay, MGN 12H and the rest are MGN 9. So this is the 12H then, thank you. I was one size, one size down. Uh, the sideboard build plate is super rough. Doesn't feel consistent. The markings came off PETG and it's difficult to see certain materials. Interesting, oh, so you're talking about the build, okay, so not the bed itself, but the actual like um, PEI bed. I haven't had issues with it, but it kind of sounds like Markings came off with PETG. It sounds like you have a different bed than me because mine doesn't have um, One second since we're talking I've got I've literally got it right here because it's it's been going through uh, Open heart surgery for some upgrades um, Yeah, you must have a different bed than me because this is this is the bed that came on my uh, Cyborg v0.2 and there's no markings on it. It's worked great like it. It's 
everything is stuck really well and I haven't had any issues with it. So they must, I wonder if you have an older bed or I have an older bed, but yeah, the one that came with mine, it's it's got basically pow um, powder coated on one side. Let's see if we can show it. And then it's got uh, smooth PEI, which I haven't even peeled off. I think there's a cover on it. I haven't even peeled off. I'm, I'm a textured guy, so I, I, <laughs> I haven't even messed with it. But yeah, mine's been fine. So I wonder if you've got, again, uh, it sounds like you've got a different version based off of what you're describing. But yeah, I don't like markings on the build plates. I haven't seen any that don't come off with PETG or just enough printing. Uh, reminder, bed last. Cool, thank you, I will do. Hey, zombies in the house. What's going on, man? I heard that you mastered the uh, ukulele. Just ask me, Dan. I know everything, at least for tried it and be too. <laughs> Perfect, that sounds great. Uh, okay, so yeah, we've got our uh, high wind rail. We've got our cable raceways or cable, cable tracks. We've got the rest of our... Is it five more rails? So one, yeah, so two for Y and three for Z. And these are all, so it looks like, okay, so it looks like there's two, there's three different types of rails. So here's one, here's the three of the same, which I'm assuming is gonna be for Z axis then, since we want all the same. And then Y axis are Cyborg branded. So in all honesty, I don't really care as long as the, what, the rails are, you know, decent quality and they function the way they're supposed to be. The the ones that I think the the ones that came on the B0.2 build were cyborg branded and they've worked out fine. So um their beds are whatever they can get that week. Mine is double textured. Wow. Okay, so yeah, but definitely different with beds. Um I got a black black I got a black PEI bed. I was expecting the one that you got. Also PEI build services are finicky. They like to crack. Yeah, that's wild. That's definitely different than yes, uh, band of ukulele and uh, ocarinas. <laughs> that sounds that sounds amazing. <laughs> okay, uh, so yeah, we've got rails. We've got we've got our uh, insulation foam, which is two different thicknesses. I didn't realize this was a thing. I went with all three millimeter on uh, the two point four. So I will learned the hard way um, that the thinner stuff goes on top and the three millimeter is typically for the side and back panels. Uh, once again, we've got our wiring diagram, which is something I, I love. I mentioned it in my 0.2 Cyborg review. It's a small detail, but boy, is it nice. Even with me having computers right in front of me at all times uh, in pretty much every room, I like having this for the wiring, just being able to throw it wherever you want. And, and uh, it's just nice. It's small detail, but super nice. So we've got that. Uh, we've got our bed, which doesn't look like it's edge to edge. It's definitely not edge to edge. So it's gonna be a bit smaller of a bed. I don't know how standard that is or isn't, but that's something definitely to point out is that the bed has probably an inch, um, I would say roughly an inch gap on the side. So uh, my about reminder that the top panel, <laughs> thanks zombie, uh, sides are thicker to clear the, that's right. That, that was the reason why. Uh, miss the frame color the frame so the frame is a it's a chrome purple so it's completely the only purple frame i've ever seen before is the ldo one because i built a v0 in it this is completely different it's much brighter in chrome so it's going to come down to personal preference which one you like um i'm excited for this <laughs> but yeah I, I think that i like both of them just they're very different and then the printed parts are black and blue so you'll you'll see them shortly here cam <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sorry. Hopefully you're okay with that nickname, Ted. Um, it's standard. Okay, so it's standard Voron spec. Gotcha. Uh, glue to the bottom panel when you're done. Get high temp RTV. So we do have RTV glue from um, a previous, I think from the Mercury build. So we've got this stuff. All I remember is that it smelled like hell and it was super messy. So I might not do this on stream. I might be responsible and go out to the garage versus doing it in here like we did last time. It lingered, that smell. Uh, so for our bed, do we want to measure the thickness of the bed? It, it, it feels like a pretty damn thick bed, uh, but I know that we like stats or specifics here. So I've got my, um, one second, I've got my calipers over here. Ooh. Also feel like the lighting is a little bit too bright. Let me see if I can make the adjuster F stop a little bit. That should help a tiny bit. Okay. I don't think Jesus was known for his technical prowess. <laughs> uh, do it outside in the garage, blue masking tape will be, oh, that's a, that's a great idea, Luke, yeah. I, last time I just, if I remember correctly, I someone told me to use like water, so I think what I did was, 
uh, basically just spread some of it around. And then I had my, um, oh gosh, the uh, nitrile gloves and I was dipping my finger in water and then sort of going around, which did an okay job. It really wasn't bad. It sort of, um, it, it was not bad, but I do think that having some blue painter's tape will be much, much nicer. So let's see. So this is 8.3 roughly. I mean, we've got a tiny little film. So let's say roughly eight, eight and a half mil or eight. Now it's saying 8.58. Make sure I've got this set correctly. Yeah, zero. It's coming up at like 8.5. So I'm, I'm going to say, we'll, we'll go, we'll round down. We'll say it's roughly eight, eight-ish mil. Uh, is this, a, this is a three, oh, is this a 300 or a 300 cube? I don't know. I didn't know that there was two different, it's a, I didn't know there was two different variations. I wonder if... Uh, I'm assuming it's just a 300. What's the standard? Uh, do they say under their specs on here? I didn't know there was two different. Um, this is okay. So no, this is, this is, this is 250. So 250, it's a 250 then by 300 by 300. Yeah. Okay. Only all is cubed. Yeah. I didn't know there was even two different versions. I recently started printing the bigger version of the drawer thing that you created. Had a lit oh no. Sorry to hear that, Maurice. Okay, so we've got our bed. Um, we've got, let's see, powder coated PEI. So this is exactly the same stuff that was on my V0.2. And then the other side. What the? <laughs> what happened? Let me check one second. That was weird. <clears throat> I think that the HDMI cable must be right on the edge then. No. Huh. I don't know. That was a weird one. The bed's the exact same though as uh, what was on the V0.2. So we, why? Well, that's a bummer. Um, give me one sec. Let's see. I'm going to unplug and plug things back in. So you look like you're fine and not damaged. That's the first time that's happened. I mean, I've had the camera overheat once before, but I feel like we've corrected that. Okay, so I've unplugged and plugged. Let me also turn this on and off one time. <laughs> Darn it, this isn't, this isn't even an Amazon Basics cable. But it, I mean, it has been, it's a long HDMI cable and it's been plugged in and unplugged and moved around and kicked and stepped on for the last uh, year and a half or so. So I probably should have ordered more than just one. Hopefully it's just a freak thing and it's not gonna continue, but we shall see. Um, so yeah, this is the same as the V0.2. Smooth on one side and powder coated on the other, which I've been really happy with. So uh, again, no, I don't like any of the, I mean, if you've got like your branding right here, I don't really care, but any sort of grid or pattern, I, I just think is silly. What, what's the point of it? And it just comes off. You, I haven't seen any company that's successfully done that and it not peel off over time. So. Um, I have a micro HDMI. I have to replace the cable every few months. Oh, interesting. Yeah, this, so what I'm rocking on here is a, this camera is micro HDMI. So it goes micro HDMI to full size HDMI on a uh, small rig cage that's bolted to it. And then I go full size HDMI. The reason why I do that is because um, since I have to unplug and plug it every single week, I knew that if I was doing that with the camera, I would eventually destroy the micro HDMI. But since the micro HDMI just stays in plugged in permanently, I only unplug full size. It's it's a much better setup. I highly recommend it actually. Um, yeah, I can send you, I don't know what camera you have, but Small Rig makes the adapters and the cages for like everything. And that is one of the, one upgrade I highly recommend. Uh, so we've got the Omron probe, which we're not gonna be using. We are gonna be doing Voron Tap, but it does come with that. Standard power cable. We've got our power supply, which I don't think is mean well. It is mean well. Oh, that's cool. I, for some reason, didn't think they came with meanwhile. So we've got an LRS 224. So this is the, yeah, this is the nicer power supply. So there's no fan in it. It's it's just uh, sort of like passively cold. I guess, I mean, we're gonna have fans down below, right? So it will, there will be fans, but there's no fan inside of it. Also, while I'm thinking about it, let's flip this switch over uh, so that doesn't cause issues later. So it's 230 right now, I'll set it to 115. So we've got that set correctly. Um, 25 IT admin and audio specialists get a better cable. Yeah. Uh, micro slash mini HDMI is such a bad, I, I hate, 
hate's a strong word. Maybe I don't want to use that word, but like I, I, I strongly dislike anything but full size HDMI. Um, USB C, I guess, is the exception if you're doing uh, picture over it, but other than that, I just don't like it. Okay, uh, what else do we have? So we have got our uh, drivers and what else is in here? So these are all bisect drivers and they're 2209. So they're, here's the, but again, I don't, I think these are gonna be changing. So just know that if you're gonna be ordering one of these at some point that I think they're switching over to Big Tree Tech. So, but this kit has um, Fisec and what else is in here? Just some um, USB cable, some jumpers. I mean, that's about it. Uh, the board that this comes with is an interesting one. One more time, I'll say it and I'll stop saying it, it that you'll probably be getting a Big Tree Tech one if you're ordering in the you know distant future. Uh, but this has a Voron, so it's the Voron Fisec Spider. So it's the Fis uh, Spider V2.3, which I've never used a Fisec board. So I'm I'm excited, uh, a little bit nervous. <laughs> now that I've had any issues with Fisec, their gear has been fine. Uh, just, it'll be interesting to see how this compares. Lately, I've been using a lot of different boards. I've been pretty much like 99% Big Tree Tech for the last few years. And then this year has been like, Maker base boards and uh, f uh, fly like mellow boards and now Fisec. So we've gone through the gauntlet of boards. Uh, first time catching your stream. Hello and good day. Hey, what's going on? Uh, I don't know how to say your name. We'll just go with le 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 tien dot. We're gonna go with dot tien. I don't know. Uh, teachers dragging them around in the class, unplugging and replugging them, and they just keep working. That's the uh, the more expensive ones. Much better. Strain relief and prevent premature failure. Okay, yeah, maybe I should do that then. Uh, it does come with an orange pie. Yep, board works well. Nice, good to know. Uh, if shipping wasn't $200 on top of that cost of the kit, this kit would be a literal steal. Yeah, if you get it from their website, the shipping's included, but the cost is different. The, the cost on their website is, what did we say, nine, uh, is it 920 or 820? Uh, so yeah, if you order on their, their Cyborg website and not through AliExpress, I think it's anything over $3.99 on their website has free shipping. So they basically just, you know, group it in, uh, but it's $9.19 on their website. So I think, I think it ends up breaking down to nearly the exact same thing. Just one of them, they have it listed differently, probably to be competitive with the AliExpress landscape. Um, and then on their website, they have it grouped in. Let's see. Okay, so that's that. Um, let's move this to the side. We'll go through the last thing and then I want to get freaking building. It's been 33 minutes. I would love to get the frame completed on stream today uh, as a bare minimum. But we've also, today's the last day. I mentioned last week that um, my sister-in-law was flying into town. Today's her last day here, so it won't be a long, long stream because um, I want to spend some time with her. Uh, using the spider in my 2.4. Nice. Okay. You've been happy with it? Hey, make RS. Thank you very much for the five get the memberships. Cheers. Um, Steven got one. Truggy got one. Uh, Zex got one. Evil Emmy. <laughs> I like that name. And Joe Rust. Thank you for the support. Okay, so let's take a look. There's a lot of stuff down here. Um, we'll, we'll, we're going to go quickly through this. So uh, steppers are going to be from Stepper Online, at least for the AB, uh, the AB motors whoop, are both steppers online. Uh, we've also got, we're gonna go CAN bus eventually, but for the sake of the build, we'll go with what they've included, which is, um, I assume it's a Heart K, another one of these. Hey, Steve's in the house. Everyone say hi, Steve. We're building a Trident, Steve. <laughs> Look at, and, and to, um, in, in honor of Steve, I also, we even got one of his hex trays. I, it's got all sorts of assorted other things in it, but we're, we're, we're doing the thing, Steve. <laughs> <clears throat> so yeah, I don't know. I don't know what breakup. I would assume, I thought Hart K was like the only person that made these boards, but someone, I don't know who makes this one. There's sandals on it. Um, <laughs> and it's a two, it's a two piece. It says stealth burner RZT two dash one. And it looks like a flying chameleon of sorts. So. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, um, I mean, someone else might know. Uh, I wish I could watch your stream on Sunday, but I was driving through Chicago, traffic jam. Yeah, so I don't really know much about this board, but it looks not identical, but similar to the um, one that we just used. 
Uh, so we've got our fans, our fans. I don't know what brand this is. It just says, I don't know, someone maybe, I don't know much about these fans. Uh, sli oh, Slipper from Cyborg. Yeah, he's one of their engineers. Okay, so I do know who that is then. I, he, me and him chatted a bit when I was doing the V0.2 build. So yeah, okay, cool. Uh, we've got, oh, nice. So they also have the Stealth Burner LEDs are already ready to rock and roll, pre-soldered. It'll be interesting to see whether I need to cut any of the wires down. Uh, with the LDO kit, the wires were a little bit longer than I liked and it was causing the face of the Stealth Burner to not sit flush. And so I ended up cutting off, I mean, I think it was like half of an inch, but it made all the difference and recrimping. So we'll see how uh, length goes. But again, not having the solder is definitely a plus. I don't mind soldering, but again, I know some don't like soldering and it's just added time. Uh, no pre-crimped wires. Not, it doesn't look like there's pre, no, there are pre-crimped wires. So weird. I'll, I'll show you here. We'll, we'll go through this. Um, we've got a tiny spool of some PLA, it's just some orange PLA. We've got uh, NSK bearings. There's a lot of stuff. Uh, he's got the new slipper slipper stickers. Let's not cut myself. Yeah, giving filaments a little bit funny. <laughs> okay, so these are just our like flange flange bearings. So yeah, they come inside of this little little box here. So we'll throw this over here. What else do we have? We've got a, uh, comes with a Phillips screwdriver. So we've got that. Hey, Nice is in the house. Thank you, thank you Nice for the five good memberships. Also, I hope you're, uh, are you still in France or are you back from France? I know last week you, were, you didn't really have service. Thank you very much, Nice. Uh, let's see, okay, so the, this fan is a Cyborg branded fan. So we'll see how the fans are in this. I'm curious how they compare because the fans were definitely not great on the V0.2. I ended up swapping them. So I'm curious to see how this goes. Uh, we've got our VHB tape. We've got our cable chains. We've got some red. We've got some red PTFE tubing, which I might swap out uh, just because, you know what? I might use this. I might end up using this for the Voron 2.4 since it's black and red. Uh, but for this, since this is a purple, black and blue, Trident. It's just, again like sort of off color, but really small, small thing. Um, we've got flush cutters. We've got tons of zip ties. We've got a deburring tool. Uh, what ID? Oh, inner diameter. The great question. So this looks thin, uh, or like it doesn't look like it's. I think three millimeter right is normally what you want for reverse button. This is not. This is. 2.15 roughly 2.13 2.15 is the inner diameter so this would be primarily used for what inside of the stealth burner tool head uh nice says i'm back in belgium nice you're still on, you're still on uh vacation right i think you still got like one more week of hang time yeah don't use that okay this is fine to use though for inside the stealth burner right like that tiny little bit but for the reverse boat and i know you typically want larger uh, it comes with a deburring tool, which is cool. <laughs> Look, I've, I've used this one forever, um, but I probably need to, you know what? I think I need to swap out the, the deburring blade on it. Pull that PTFE straight and leave it in the sun. Pull that PTFE sh straight and leave it in the sun for a couple of hours. Uh, inside tool head is fine, just not for the filament guide. Okay, yeah, good to know. I will not do that then. I was kind of already planning uh, planning that route. Uh, so then we've got a set of Allen keys as well. So they give you a lot of goodies. I, I don't think you, you probably don't actually need any of your own tools to build this. It's, it seems like that's likely what they're going for, but we will use our tools since you know ours are fancier, but uh, that is cool. We've got our little extruder stepper motor, which is a moons. So extruders, moons, and then the AB motors or steppers online. We've got our belts, which I'm assuming are gonna be Gates belts. Uh, yeah, they say Gates, so Gates belts, um, our AC, AC wires. And then, so the thing that's kind of odd is we've got, these are, these are all, pretty much all of our wires and they're definitely PTFE, I can already tell by the, 
like the look of the outside of them. So they're all labeled. Um, they're all labeled and they're all pre-crimped. So what I'm not sure about is, so they give you, um, they give you like a full set of here. You've got all of your connectors and these look like MicroFit, uh, MicroFit 3.0s and you get all the connectors here, but it looks like they do also give you, so we're, we're going to attempt to use what they give us. Um, yeah, we're going to attempt to use, uh, did I miss what John said? Uh, I like the layout of their kit, not 100 boxes like the LDO kit. Yeah, yeah, it, it's nice. So yeah, I think it gives you both. Um, just like extras if you need them for whatever, which is awesome. But our goal is to not crimp because um, Nero, <laughs> Nero said crimping ain't easy. And I just, I don't mind crimping. I can, sometimes I find it nice, like just put on some soft music and do your crimping, but it, it's not a, it's not a fun pastime for me. Uh, we've got some Wagos, uh, as well as our, again, our thermistor and heater cartridge, which are also, um, you know, pre-crimped for that breakout board. I think that's pretty much it other than the, oh, nice. Uh, we've got a PTFE cutter, which I ordered one of these off AliExpress not long ago and lost it. So I'm happy to have one of these. Um, what is this? Is this just wire? Like just extra PTFE wire? Uh, motors, oh, motors are not plug-in. Okay, so, oh, so, so motor wires we have to do ourselves? So this is just, this is not PTFE, this is silicone wire. Um, so this is not stuff going through the cable chain. So maybe, maybe it's for the motor? I don't know, we'll figure it out, I really don't know. Uh, and then we've got a Fetus Dragon High Flow, which I'm pretty happy about. This is a, this is a very nice, my first ever V0, or my first ever Voron, uh, was the V0.1 that I self-sourced and I went with a Dragon. I think I just have a Dragon standard and this is a Dragon High Flow, but it's a, it's a really nice uh, hot end. I, I don't have any complaints. So this, this will be nice to use. And I think that's, it. Uh, the last thing I guess to quickly look at is also the motors. So let me move all this out of the way here. Uh, I'll just shove it up top in the closet. Ladder of parts. Uh, so these are the um, three Z motors. So we'll take a quick look at these and then we're going to get into it. I need to build stuff. No music today. There is music. It might be lower, maybe raise audio a little bit, but yeah, I definitely hear the music. Dragon works well, Rapido's better, but good enough. Yeah, I I do think that the Rapido is likely better, but like the Dragon's still a high quality hot end. So we've got our three integrated stepper lead screws for the Trident. Uh, they're not PTFE, they're just standard. The Although the, the nuts are PTFE, or not PTFE, they're um, palm, they're palm. And these are all, so these are not steppers online. These are just, I don't know what these are. Uh, ADF, AFDE, 1.8 degree, 1.5 amp, according to the sticker. So there's three types of steppers. We've got moons for the extruder. We've got these for the Z. And then we've got steppers online for the AB. Yeah, palm. <laughs> Wagos over wire nuts. Oh, Wagos are, I don't like wire nuts. <laughs> I, I mean, even if it's just like, a, I know that they're functional. I just don't like the way that they look. I'm, I'm definitely a Wago, Wago fan. Hey Steve, did you notice I updated the chat? I, I did it right before, uh, I mean, pretty close before we went live today. So it's a little bit smaller. It's got that black background so you can see it even on the white surface. And this scene for some reason never had a chat box. And so now we've got a chat box. I still need to play around with like size and location, but really happy with, um, really happy with the way it looks in comparison. Yeah. <laughs> also, I know you, I, I sent Steve a photo, but uh, the the HDMI cable comes today. So I just need the extended power cable, which will be here Friday, and then we'll be set for an overhead camera, which I'm really, really excited about. So some nice little improvements. Okay, so let's get, let's get going here. Um, I don't know if we'll put these off to the side right now. I already feel really hyper. I, I I had some iced coffee this morning or my cold brew this morning. Um, and I, I feel like it's just hitting me now. So can you reach the camera to zoom? Uh, yes, on my tippy toes, I can. 
Uh, there's a little lever right here. So yeah, I can. I was planning on just finding a happy medium where it wouldn't need to be zoomed very often, but I can show like, let's see. Burp. So the toggle is right, where are you at toggle? There you are. Toggle, you can't see it actually, but it's right here. So I can reach it by tippy toe, but hopefully I'm only gonna be zooming here and there. Uh, but yeah, my goal is just to find like a happy medium for a build. So obviously a taller build will need more. Um, yeah, we'll see, <laughs> we'll see how it goes. If not, I'll, I'll 3D print me a little stool. <laughs> Yeah, this is a ZV-1. Uh, I, I bought these after Tom... Tom was streaming heavily for like two months, I feel like, and then he stopped. But when Tom was streaming, he bought three of them. And I was like, well, Tom ha always has phenomenal looking videos and aesthetic. And I was like, if he's saying that they're good for streaming... <laughs> so I bought one for Christmas in 20... Like Christmas of like 2021. So, or something like that. Uh, it, it's an awesome camera. Hey, PF, thank you very much for the five uh, memberships. Let's see, Brian got one um extend the support a little further yeah i could uh 3dp uk dan murphy chad and uh, jacko thank you thank you guys so let's get to it um i've got the pdf pulled up you can't convert uh you can't control it over wi-fi from your stream deck that's an intro i don't know that i can um i i don't know if there is a way that would be wicked cool if i could have a zoom in and zoom out from the steam deck i, I hadn't even considered that I'm gonna say I don't think so, but I need to look into that because if I could, that would be really, really cool. Um, okay, so let's see here. Where are you, manual? Ooh, that's neat. I didn't realize that the Voron assembly manual had a little uh, a little trident, uh, or the Voron trident. <laughs> that's funny, That's I like that. All right, so we can pretty much skip through this since it's we've already printed, or the parts are here. Um, primary and accent. Accent's gonna have the A for printing, we know that. Reporting issues, different hardware types, it's pretty much uniform, uh, uniform for the different Voron builds. Hardware references, blind joints. Yeah, so frame is where we are starting. So I think the first thing I'll do is, is lay out all the extrusions. Um, one thing I also saw, which was in the 2.4, and uh, Delmar had to keep telling me that that measurement was for a 250 and not a 300, is that this calls out build size dependent on which parts are going to be different. And I also saw it even further down um, for like a measurement, they called it out. Uh, I don't know if I can find it, but yeah, there, there seems to be some more call outs in this guide, uh, which is nice because again, depending on the size you're building, 250 to 350, um, it's going to... The, the extrusion sizes will be different. Uh, Sony does sell a remote you can use to zoom, a little tripod meant for vlogs. Huh, I'll, I'll, look, in, I'll look into it then. Yeah, I, I haven't, uh, I got the ZV-1 shortly after it came out and I haven't done, uh, you can zoom in from the app, but the app is quite bad. I've definitely used the app because I shoot all Sony and I downloaded it for the A6400 and the FX30 and the app is awful. I don't use the app at all. Uh, even for monitoring myself, I now just plug this in plug the FX30 into this big TV behind it. So that, that's my, like, um, when I'm recording myself, I can see that I'm in focus and in and, and frame and all that stuff. Yeah, their app is quite bad. All right, so let's lay out everything. We'll start by laying things out just by um, length. So these are all the same length. This is shorter. This is shorter. <clears throat> To prepare for uh, to prepare for today's build, I started. I was on daddy duty last night because uh, Aaron's sister's in town and they wanted to have a girls' night, and so uh, it was me and Jackson. And so I put on I put on Steve and uh, Pooch's Trident build that they recently did. Again, so I watched some of it live, but I put it on last night to sort of prepare and see if there was anything that stood out from the beginning. Okay, so those are all the same height. This is short. This is short. Uh, the camera has an analog zoom. Yeah, so the, the switch on it actually physically moves the lens because it's a point and shoot. It's not a DSLR. Um, but I wonder if you still could... Well, it's a digital... It's a digital zoom... 
like it, it's not a manual zoom like it's a it's at least a so it's a physical zoom but it's motorized it's a motorized zoom i guess that's what i'm <laughs> that's the word so um yeah but if nothing else, I can probably just do like a fake zoom where I have it, where it sort of crops in at a, at a button on the stream deck if nothing else. We'll see, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. First, let's get it plugged in. <laughs> I'm just excited to have a, a third, um, third field of view. Okay, so these look identical and then this is the same. So we've got what? Okay, so starting on the short end, of here we've got two short ones um which are not the same size even those are different sizes okay so that must be d that's throwing me off so on the short ones we have four different shorter ones there's four different sizes and looking on here, so that must be you. The length of mark extrusions depends on add 50 to 100 millimeters. Okay. What's the difference between G and D? I'm assuming it's only a difference of uh, threads. Although this is still kind of odd to me because they look like they're the Oh, they're not the same height. No, no, no. Okay. So the shortest one's G extrusion. I wonder, should we label these? I, I have a feeling last time we talked about this and we I think we should for the little ones. So the shortest one is a G extrusion. Um, I think we should label them. At least some of these. Uh, what did you pick for printed parts colors? They sent over all the printed parts. And so it's black and blue, which wouldn't have been like, if I was just picking colors, it wouldn't have been what I would have picked. But it's, I actually think it's going to look quite nice because of the fact that the purple is chrome and these are sort of like, um, they're kind of, I don't know if I'd say use the word neutral, but they're, they're not very pop, poppy colors because the frame kind of does the pop in for you. So there's the blue and here's the black. It's a, it's a nice blue. So it, I think it's going to look really clean when it's all together. Um, but yeah, it's so blue and black. <clears throat> Oh, is that the OG Trident colors? <laughs> I'm like, it wouldn't have been the colors I chose, Steve. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, so yeah, let's just quickly label at least the ones that are sort of not uh, the bulk of them. That way I don't screw things up because these two are real similar in um, real similar in size, but they're not the same. So this is going to be our smallest. Where's my Sharpie? Here we go. Uh, so smallest one's a G extrusion. So we'll just go mark it G. And then the next smaller one is the D extrusion, which is right here. Let's zoom out a little bit. Uh, Joker build would be cool. I want the reason why I want to use their parts is again, like because I'm doing a video after it's all said and done, that's sort of a, uh, it's like a bit of a build review. If there's any issues with the printed parts, like um, the V0.2, the parts were great. Like the only issues I had were um, a part that I broke. I'm gonna say, make sure I'm not screwing things up here. Was a part that I broke. Um, and so I wanna be able to give that feedback because if someone buys this kit and doesn't have a machine that can print ABS, um, if there's part issues, I wanna call them out. Uh, for the printed parts, uh, okay for the printed parts, but why go purple frame? I don't, it, it's a nice, it's a nice purple, nice. <laughs> it's, it's a chrome purple. I, I like the frame. Aaron, I showed Erin, she loves the frame. Um, okay, so the two shortest ones, and we have two that look identical, which are E and H, which should be... Oh, okay, so they're not. So one of them, one of them, oh, interesting. Okay, so these are identical if you're doing a 250 build, but because we're not doing a 250 build, one of them is gonna be longer and that's the E extrusion. So the longer one of these two shorter ones is the E extrusion. Let's mark that. Hey, Lisa, thank you very much for the five gifted memberships. You guys, today's been membership crazy, thank you. Um, you, 3 dp Rui, Eggy, uh, Alien, and TJ. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lisa. Okay, so the longer one is, what did I just say? E is the longer one. 
Yeah, he's the longer one. Uh, so let's mark this as E. With me, like in my distractedness, uh, having these odd ones marked or these different ones marked is going to save my life later. Okay, so this is H then, the one that's right next to it. And I don't know that I need to mark the rest of them. Do you ever mark yours, Steve? When you're doing builds? H. <laughs> nice says white purple and then DJ says cool purple. Yeah, it's a, it's a very, I mean, color and uh, color choice is very, like, there's no rule of what looks or doesn't look. It's, it's going to be up to the person. So I, I think it's going to look quite nice. I think that the black and the blue will complement it pretty well. So, uh, so we have a C extrusion, which is the one that's got the hole through it. So we can mark that just so that way there's something different about that. And the rest are all A's. Not usually, but I won't say I don't mess up. <laughs> At least you're honest. Yeah, I've never marked it. It was last stream when I think it was uh, Luke or Digital Dragon. Uh, maybe one other person that was like, you should mark, you should label them. Uh, and I did, at least a couple of them. And it was, it was quite helpful. Okay, so B's are the long ones. They're all the same. A's are the rest of them. And then we've labeled, oh, we're missing at an app extrusion. Okay, so it looks like F is going to be the exact same in this case as C because it's, because C is based off of, yes. The only difference might be they're both tapped and thread. So yeah, I think these are the same. C and F are the same, but we'll still we'll still mark it. Uh, I don't see any difference. The holes look the same. Yeah, I'm gonna go with the differences normally that one of them is threaded and tapped, and the other ones maybe not. Uh, C and F. Okay. X tray. Uh, Steve, you need an XL tray to sort extrusions. Never play poker with Steve. <laughs> um, Proud owner of a Prusa tagged. Prusa tagged Trident. I think the kit looks good, but since it's the cheapest foreign kit, I wouldn't add filament nor tools and maybe improve parts, fan or heater, or add a clicky. Yeah, I um, I tend to agree. Like, looking through the parts in that were included in this kit, I don't really have any complaints. Um, but like you said, if they could swap out, because I don't like inductive, if they could swap out some of those extra parts for clicky or um, what would be something else? Or or um, since they're since they're swapping over a touchscreen and that's going to affect the cost, if they can swap over a touchscreen but remove the tools and have it not affect cost, I also think that could be great. So yeah, I, I do I agree with what you're saying. Okay, so build size, dependent, sweet. Uh, now we're gonna be taking pretty much everything. Uh, okay, so not the four long ones. We'll put these off to the side. And... Okay, so we need all of these. And then we need one of the shorter two. I don't, which one is that one? Um, so H, we need an H extrusion, it looks like. Oh, we see it right here. So it says C, A's, and H, which C is the one with the hole in it. Okay, so C, A's, and H. And these are all getting bolts on the end. So we're gonna be just installing M5 by 16s onto the ends of all of these, right? That's what it looks like. Okay, so we're gonna do. It's gonna be just screwing into, uh, screwing into the ends of these for a few minutes here. The tools are ten cent tools. Uh, won't make a de uh, decent price difference. Very extrusions. Okay, what did I say? M five sixteens. M five by tens. M five sixteens. Okay. And we need two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, almost all of these. Let's just dump out quite literally all of these and just 
We'll just go by hand right now. Hey, what's up, Lucas? Tape can go back on the tape wall. Oh, come on. My hands are like semi shaky, which is gonna be fun. There we go. Uh, are you aware of Voron DB, Voron Database? Is that for colors? I know there's a website um, where I think it's primarily for seeing people's colors, right? Where they submit their build, it has like their serial number and then what colors they went with, like specifics of the filament uh, brand and then the color. Uh, Cyborg should have the option to buy without the printed parts. If Cyborg are able to print ABS, they could just choose. Oh, people are, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I tend to agree with that as well. Um, because there's definitely people that want just a lower price point kit, uh, and they, they can absolutely print ABS perfectly fine on their own. The, the one thing I know that's difficult about multiple SKUs is packing. So like, Offering lots of options complicates everything. So then they have to decide whether they pack to order, right? Like build the build the boxes to order. Okay, this order came in. Someone needs to pack this specific config, um, which is not which is not easy. It's like added labor, um, or again, just have offer that as an option. But the more options, the more options a manufacturer offers, the more complicated things get, and there's more room for error and, and added cost. So yeah, I do I do agree. We can see reflection. <laughs> it's a it's a chrome like this is I would describe this again as a chrome purple. It is the the most shiny reflection um, of a frame ever. I I don't think that like I wouldn't want this level of shiny reflective for all of my builds. Uh, but it's a fun change from the more like satin uh, color that a lot of the anodized ones are. Uh, I think the printed CNC parts are probably pretty big differentiation for them. Um, that's their niche people who can print ABS typically will buy LDO. Uh, hey, I made Born Database. Everyone should upload their builds there. Yeah, I discovered it not that long ago. I don't know. I wasn't searching for it. I don't know what I was searching for. And uh, it came up. And then I saw somebody else asking the other day um, about color, color recommendations for build. And someone sent a link on Twitter to it. It's definitely nice to get to have a central place because I spent I've spent a lot of nights going through the Voron Discord's build showcase, just looking at different color options and stuff. But a lot of times it doesn't say exactly you know what brand of filament it is and the color. So you're kind of just getting a general sense of okay, that's like oh that's a cool color combo or I don't like that. So having the oops. Um, having the specifics of the filament and color is awesome. It's really cool. I think this I think this color is standard. Yeah, I'm almost positive. Um, I don't know if they offer... I don't think currently they offer a different... I think that they should offer at least black. Uh, but I don't think they do as of right now. All products are printed on Trident. Yeah, as of right now, that's the standard. Um, I'm curious to see, at least on their website, we can check. So on their website, it's purple. On AliExpress, do they have uh, AliExpress? I border. I don't know if they have a different color on the AliExpress. I can definitely provide that feedback. Yeah, right now, so you have CNC option for parts. But yeah, it's, this is the color. So I, I think black would be a nice option. Um, I think their T.4 is, has at least, so there's their V0.2. So there's the 2.4 and this is a black frame. Yeah, I think that black would probably be a better option if they are only going to go with one or at least have the option for black. Because I can definitely see not everybody wanting bright purple. Uh, which color prints? Which color prints best? I have no idea. I know that white sucks <laughs> compared to a lot of the other colors, but 
I can let, um, I'm sure they already know, but I can let my contact know that there's definitely interest in a non-purple, purple frame. Because it, it sort of limits your color choice. Like if it's a black frame, then you can kind of do whatever you want with your printed parts, but purple, you, you know, you kind of have to stick within some sort of a, I guess you don't have to do anything, but I think it makes it a little bit tougher. Uh, I had to reprint all my white parts, lots of cracking. Yeah, I went with white on, this is a little bit tough. I went with white on the Mercury 1.1. This is a little bit tight. And they, they've been fine. I did crack one piece on the tool head actually, but I think that was more me than the parts. They've been holding up okay. That's probably the white Polymaker ASA slash ABS is probably the best white that I've used in terms of consistency compared to other whites. I've had some wild rides with not just ABS or ASA, even PLA, but like just white filament in general. I uh, would love sp uh, space gray. Yeah, I guess, I guess maybe the recommendation I can make is a more neutral color. <laughs> Zombie, you like Polymaker? I thought you were, I thought you were an E-Sun guy. <laughs> yeah, Polymaker, a I've printed out a lot of Polymaker ASA and ABS uh, over the last year or whenever, like since all the ABS and ASA came in and it's been very consistent. This is not... This doesn't look like it's tapped. Is there another one that's the same size as eight? Maybe I'm tripping, let me see. I wonder if they forgot to do that. Um. Do, 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 do. Where is build manual? So we need, oh, H only has it on one side. Uh-huh, uh-huh. If I just look, you can't really see that. Let me hide chat. Once again, it's me and not the product. Um, yeah, H only shows it going into one side. So that is good. What happened to chat? Oh, there we go. Uh, we can talk about them now. I love Galaxy Dark Grey. Yeah, Galaxy Dark Grey is really nice. Uh, my sister-in-law was out in the garage. I was showing her a bunch of like printer stuff, and she's like, "Ooh, what's that sparkly one?" And it was it was Galaxy Dark Grey ABS. Okay, so we've got those in place. We've got one, two, three blocks based off of everybody yelling at me last stream build. Uh, we've got, uh, squares, we've got clamps, we are, I mean business today, I'm, we don't want any twisted frames, like, we've got all of the, all the things. Uh, lower back extrusions. All right, so, starting off, we've got B extrusion, which is, are B's the long ones? Let's see, I, you know what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna open up. Yeah, these are the long ones. I'm gonna open up a secondary uh, window on this right side, so I don't have to keep. That was that was the annoying part of the 2.4 build. Me going back and forth trying to remember the extrusions. Uh, how do we get rid of you? There we go. Okay. So B extrusions are the long ones, and they've got two. Holes. Uh, hey Dutch, anyone use Flashforge filaments? I find the ABS Pro really easy to print. I don't know that I've used Flash. I've used Flashforge printers, but I don't know that I've used their filaments. Okay, so we're using A extrusion and C extrusion. And C extrusion we should have labeled. We do. Okay. 
So A is just any of these, any of these. We're gonna do the same direction initially so I don't screw this up. And then for the holes, it looks like we want the holes facing. So the two holes, uh, which I don't know how well you can see, yeah, one there, one there, should be upwards and facing towards the same direction as the A extrusion. Wait, so I goofed, didn't I? Yeah, so this is A extrusion. We want the holes to go on the top and facing towards the A extrusion. And then C extrusion is going, uh, C extrusion hole, which I think is dead center. Is the hole in the C extrusion dead center? Let's see. So that's roughly, let's say 210. Roughly, two, yeah, it's dead center. Okay. Um, the, this hole is going to be facing upwards. So we're going to go like this. Let's move our hardware out of the way. And okay, that looks right. Just, oh, wait, just off center? It looks perfectly center. Are you sure? Uh, we do our best to call out things that might bite you later in the assembly, but may skip it. It looks exactly center. You sure, Phil? It looks dead center. Okay, so the things we are gonna do is, for one, I'm gonna clamp, I'm gonna clamp one extrusion down. Let's see, so let's slide this out of here. Might have been crappy drilling on that one build. Okay, yeah, I'll say it looks identical. Okay, so we're gonna clamp this down to our quartz so it doesn't twist, because that was an issue last time. I kept having it where as I was tightening things down, they were twisting. So let's get this in place. I should probably grab more clamps, actually. Okay, that should be flat. And then on this side, let's get our, I'm gonna clamp it to the block. Let's try this. Actually, no. I think what's the best way to do this? Okay, new idea. We're clamping, we're gonna do a second clamp on this and then I'm not gonna clamp the one, two, three block. I'm just gonna hold it in place as a guide. I like that idea better. I think that this extrusion right here needs two clamps because one of them is still allowing it to pivot. Let's try this. Uh, scoring the frame took me seven days. I rebuilt it several times until my finger couldn't feel a bump between the extrusions. Oh man. I, we're going to try our best. I, I mean, I'm, I'm <laughs> sometimes I get a little bit anal about the, the frame being perfect. Um, so let's see, block the edge here. Uh, don't clamp the desk and stone. Just yeah, yeah. It's it's just sorry. It it isn't clamped to the desk. Yeah, you're you're a good call. It's just clamped to the stone. I pulled out the stone further so that way I could do that. That doesn't look like it went very straight. What the heck happened there? Okay, so I need to hold. All right, let's see. let me loosen this again. I don't know why this is. Okay, so I'm applying pressure from the block and with 
I'm pulling the vertical towards the one, two, three block. So it should, oh, it should be good, but it's not, it's tweaked. Interesting. All right, let me try this. Uh, I printed special frame jigs to make sure it was flat. Uh, I totally, yeah, it's just um, getting s some setting may occur during shipping. I put a block on the inside and outside. That's not a bad idea. I do have two of them. Okay, so this looks, I think that one went in well. Yeah, so that one I feel good about. The other one, I don't feel so good about. That one feels, I'm very, very happy about it. You know what? Ah, we're also goofing. I should be using, I should be using Loctite, huh? Flip it on the one side and clamp that to the horizontal extrusion. Okay, then press down and, and flip it on the one side and clamp the horizontal extrusion. I don't, I don't, uh, I can't picture what you're saying. A uh, Kinetic Labs makes a frame jig. Oh, that's awesome. Steve doesn't use Loctite. All right. <laughs> if Steve doesn't use Loctite, we're not doing Loctite because Steve knows Tridents and I trust I trust Steve. Also, we're going to be doing some pretty heavy modding to this thing later on and I don't know how much of it we're going to take apart when doing that. Um, I'm also going to change the music because it's going to give me a... It's going to me freak out a little bit. Okay. I don't like... I want to give myself a little bit more, um, a little bit more room on the edge here. Okay. All right, so I'm good with that one. This one I want to try one more time to see what's going on. I don't like. I did. Also, I did clean the. Uh... Who's that? I did clean the quartz because last time that was an issue where we had um, we had glue, super glue on it. So the issue the issue I'm having is with that pivot. Okay, let me see if I hold it like this. I think I'm just not gripping it very well. Okay, let's see how that feels. It definitely feels a, a bit better. I'm gonna try one more time. I'm not happy with it. Um. If you put the one, two, three on this one side and clamp it to the extrusion, now clamp down, you have two hands free. Steve says, so the tape you have on the extrusion is not a good idea right now. Oh, that's a good point. Cause it's wrapped around it. So it's adding additional thickness. Okay, let's, uh, good call Steve. So let's cut it so it's just scissors. I do. Yeah, I wouldn't have even. I wouldn't have even considered that, but this is relatively thick tape too, so it, it's certainly not helping, I'm sure. Okay, so let's loosen again. I wish that chat could send visuals of what they mean, because I'm sure the one, two, three block idea sounds great. I just don't, I can't picture what you're describing. It's also my first time using them. Normally, before the last build, I've always just used a square and kind of went for it. Um, 
Last build was the first one where the 2.4, the extrusions were twisting as I was clamping them. And so we ended up, um, we ended up, words are tough, using clamps and it, it made a big difference. I'm gonna slide this a little bit more off the edge too so I can clamp on both sides. Okay, so let's try clamping one more time. Uh, oh, look at live streams. Interesting. So, one, two, three block on the inside, clamped on both sides, plus the, the machine is squares. <laughs> That's wild. Can I do that with, hold on, I'm curious to see if this goes like this, Hold on. We're gonna we're gonna play around with this for a minute here. I don't know how I would do that because of the let's see if I go like this. Hold on. <laughs> what a crazy I feel like this adds like complication to this whole thing. Okay, so it's basically it was like this. But then there's also, <laughs> there's no way, there's no way. It's too much. All right, we're gonna go back. Let's just go back, we'll, we'll get this. At some point I might just say to hell with it and go to the way I did it before and need to like come back at a different time. But let's try again. What we did before was just clamp down. We didn't clamp down three things. We had one extrusion clamp down. I was suggesting you put the block on the other side so you overlap both extrusions. Put the block on the other side so you overlap both extrusions. I still can't picture that. The correct answer is always more clamps. I do I do have um, bigger clamps, but it feels like that would be overkill. And I just don't see why we need it. Like I've always just used, to be fair though, I haven't used um, one, two, three blocks. Let's try what I would normally do, which is the clamps, and then we've got just squares. This is, this, let's, let's see how this goes. Okay, so we're starting off with, I feel like this is gonna be the answer. I think it's the one, two, three blocks that are throwing me off. They're, they're new, <laughs> they're new to me. I got them based off of everyone saying I should have some, but I think I need to use them a bit more. Okay, so this is, I know. Hold on, I'm gonna loosen this up a little bit more first, there we go. The weird thing is, is that this is at an angle still, and I don't understand why. It's not been an issue for me before having it pivot like that. Okay, so down, like I need downward force on it. It wants to pivot. Um, I always thought in the 2.4, the manual should start with small pieces like Z idlers, AB front, and leave the frame in the middle part because you end up with a big frame on the side. One, two, three box, keep the 90 degree bit nice. I'm tr is there a way then? Well, I guess I could use a one, two, three block. Right here. To keep this completely like all right, we'll try, we'll try one last thing here. We're not in a race, <laughs> so, and every time, I feel like every build we do something different. So I bet so you could build a trident without touching, without touching something. Yeah, let me, let me grab, I've got two more large clamps. And if I grab one more, we can keep this extrusion down and still do a one, two, three block. Um, 
that might help me keep this from wanting to pivot like that. Let's let's give it a go. I think last maybe we did use three clamps. I never remember. I like black out during the frame part. Let's see. Oh, loud printer in the garage. Now oh, these are monster clamps <laughs> in comparison. Whew. Dusty as well. Hi, monkey. Okay. I need Steve. I feel like if every every Trident kit should come with like a one hour. There we go. So we're gonna use monster clamps for this. Okay, that'll hold down that extra use even better. So let's yeah. All right, clamps. Ah. Clamps. What if you do 90 degree between two extrusions and then add a third one? Clamp block inside a corner. Yeah, so if we go like this, what I want to do What do I want to do? My idea was to Clamp this like this. Let's see, yeah, okay. <laughs> so we're gonna go clamp crazy here. So clamp this like this. <laughs> I feel like we're overdoing this majorly. And then if we clamp the vertical <laughs> like this. <laughs> I don't know if I want to build the entire frame like this, guys. And we still have this loose guy. <laughs> this is, no, this is silly. Instead of doing three together, just do the two that are flat on the table. So. This guy pivoting is what's getting to me. So I think, okay, that's what we're going to do. Okay, I've got it. I've got it now. So if I go like this and I clamp the one, two, three block like this, then in theory, well, essentially, hold on. it would have to be perfectly flat to go up against this last extrusion. <laughs> oh my God. Remember when we used to not use any clamps? Okay, this should be perfect. <laughs> this extrusion is flat against the quartz. Then we have this vertical one up against, up against the one, two, three block. And then the one, two, three block is up against the one it's clamped to the quartz. <laughs> this just feels so silly. Okay, let's <laughs> let's do this. What happened to just screw it together? Why don't you just lay it flat and do one at a time? If we lay it flat, we could do that. Let's see. So this this should be good. Because if it's not, I, I'm, I just don't understand. Okay, that feels good. Yeah, that was good. That worked. Okay, so then now... As long as I clamp this to this. Like that. And I hold this up against this extrusion. I mean, it should be good. We're starting to get it. We're starting to get it. So the key is basically clamp down one extrusion and then sort of pivot the other one. Yeah, I think that's great. That looks good. 
This is probably what we did on the last build and I just forgot. It's been, it's been two months in, in my defense. Yeah. All right, now that we got that, I think we'll be much quicker. <laughs> All righty. Yeah, that feels, that feels great. Okay. <laughs> One down. Now we're gonna do the same thing, right? Hey, zombie, thank you for the banana. Have you tried leveling your frame? Yes. Yes, we have. Okay. So we're building another one then. Or no, this is the same thing that we just built, it's saying. Oh, so the H extrusion just slides on for now. The distance, um, oh, okay. So the H extrusion slides on the back and the back is this one that has the hole to so the center one. Okay, so it's the C frame. So we need C and then we need H, which should be right here. Okay, this is all making sense now. This one has no unique holes about it, nothing like that. So just going to be sliding to here roughly. Um, and then we will, let's actually pivot it really quick on its side for a sec here. Uh, giveaway time, also don't forget to short the short extrusion first. Yes, thank you. So I'm just gonna kind of get it a little bit, a little bit tighter like that. For this one, I'm not going to do all the things we did. I'm just going to uh, use a square because that was a bit much. Um, all right, so I'm gonna open up, uh, for anyone that's new here, because I know there's always a few, uh, we do a giveaway every single week. Polymaker allows us to give away a roll of filament anywhere in the world. And so I'm going to open the form for that. Uh, it'll be posted in chat in just a second here. And if you don't have a, if you don't have a Discord, then just put like don't have or something like that. I end up reaching out. I should probably just remove it. I end up reaching out via email 99% of the time anyway. So uh, giveaway link is getting posted in three, two, one, and then give me one second so I can pin it. There's these little reaction emojis in the way. So let me go heart. Hey, we have 117, 119 viewers, something like that. If you haven't hit the like button, please do. It'd be awesome to hit hundred likes before we do the drawing here. Uh, pin message. Okay, cool. All right, so this is saying H extrusion distance between the inside of this extrusion and the inside of that short extrusion should be 175 millimeters. And since we're doing a 300, we're adding 25 millimeters. So 200 millimeter distance between these two pieces. So. Damn, these uh these labels maybe are not a good idea, Steve. Or at least like I mean, on the labels you have to be real strategic about where you place them, I guess. Screw it. I'm just going to undo the sticker. Maybe maybe it's a good idea to have it, but then once you grab the extrusion or pick it just remove the stickers because again, it does add thickness and it's not what you want. Even if it's just a little bit when you're trying to get these extrusions flat. I gotta look back at the 2.4 video. I don't know if we removed them prior. Uh, only put the labels on the top side. Yeah, yeah. Next time I know, don't wrap them. Just do a single piece that goes on one side. Okay, I said it needs to be 200 millimeters from Basically, right here. Oh wow, it's pretty much spot on, 200 millimeters. That moved it. All 
All right, we're clamping again. Whiteboard Sharpie. Yeah, I guess that wouldn't be a bad idea either. Something that you can just wipe right on the extrusions. Okay. One thing I am gonna do probably though, just to keep this, um, yeah, I'm gonna tear. I'm gonna use a piece of that tape to mark 200 millimeters. That way I can move this ruler out of the way. So let's see, it's flat. 200 millimeters is right here. Actually wouldn't be a bad idea. Okay, so I think I just need to get used to how to use these one, two, three blocks, because it would make sense to have a one, two, three block even here to sort of reinforce um, this 2020 extrusion. So let me do this. It's like having an extra hand, I mean, in a way. Okay, it's like nice and flat. That. Ah. I'm gonna double check, double check that, but that should be, should be good. Oops. Um, meeting guys, she's here. Life drives me crazy. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Uh, labels that go in the slot. That's not bad either. I tend to actually wiping away any wipe. Yeah, that's fair too. I could see myself doing that. Okay, so we're like at, we're at like 199 and a half. We're gonna go, we're gonna go with that. We're gonna call it, call it good. And it feels nice and flat. So we did a good job. Yay. All right, so next thing. I think we'll build our bottom frame, which is... Oh, we're just going to be doing more of what we just did. So, all right. Uh, Steve says, uh, well, I'd love to stay the whole stream, but i got to get back to it. Hey, thank you for stopping by. I appreciate it, man. And and uh, and catching the, the sticker label is not being a great idea the way I was doing it. Okay, so B extrusions for all of them. And we want the holes to be facing the same way. Okay, so it seems like the key thing right here is on these long extrusions. Um, let's see. Yeah, on these long extrusions that have the two holes, so one here and one here, that they need to be going towards the front of the printer. So like this is this little guy is the back piece that we just put on. Um, and this is the side piece and it needs to be going forward. So that's like the only big thing that would be a major whoopsie if you didn't do didn't do correctly. Um, has free open source caught up with Auto Z Shaper and Pressure Advance? What, what do you what do you mean? I've been kept up and was just wondering from people who kept up. Well, I mean it's in, it's in Clipper, right? In Marlin. And Pressure Advance is also um, in both of them as well. Maybe I'm not understanding the question. <clears throat> hey, BBs, hey, you taking off, uh, John? Thanks for hanging out. Okay, so this should be an A extrusion. So it looks like, it looks like they're all A extrusions, except for, their, yeah. All right, so A extrusion should be just any of these guys. Let's move this around so we're working in the same sort of direction. So many printer parts. I feel much more confident after after our first 
clamping standstill. I feel I feel like I've got this now. So I'm just gonna rinse and repeat. We're gonna take the big clamps and we're gonna use the big clamps, two of them per. So one right here, like so. There you go, you're not going anywhere. Other one on the opposite side. Mm -mm. Like that. And then we had, how did we do this? Uh, ah, that's right. So we had the block like this, right? Yes. And then this. Wait, how did we do this? <laughs> I think this is how we did this. Yeah, so this should be good. Although that's pivoting, why? I think I actually went like this. Yeah, so I went like this, and then I hooked this corner piece, this vertical extrusion, to this to give it some reinforcement. Make sure it's nice and flat. It actually doesn't feel like it's how I did it. Okay, I think I got this. Uh, if something is not right, vertical... Wait, wait, wait. What's wrong? Uh, as far as I know, none of, none of them have it fully automated to where you don't press anything and just happens and... Oh! Uh, automated to where you don't have to press anything and it just happens without your input. Oh, oh gotcha. So you're saying automation. It feels like Clipper was close to the last. I was really into it. Just need a lot of effort to put. Yeah, so there's um one second, let me get this this vertical extrusion ink. It's sort of my my demise today. It's really got me. Okay. It's plenty tight. Let me one last thing. Gotcha. I think I missed I missed that you had said fully automated. No, that's not good. That is lifted. Why? What is I'm confused today as to what's going on, everybody. I don't understand. Why the frame is giving me such issues. Yeah, so as I'm tightening it, it's lifting. Why is that happening? That is very odd. It's super weird. I'm gonna go around this side. A middle hole should not be seen from the camera side. Oh! So I, lit I just did the opposite. <laughs> That's why it's happening. Yeah, no, no, you got me. I, I literally did exactly what I said. Just make sure you don't do. I can't multitask very well, can I? Okay, so yeah, this is incorrect. That's where our issue lies. So, there we go. Now the hole is facing towards the front, like I said to do, but didn't do. Yeah, so I don't think there's any automation. Uh, in Clipper, though, there is a, um, I can't remember what the command is. Someone might be able to just, I'm sure someone here knows it. Uh, there's a command you can run that will automatically run input shaping as long as you've got your accelerometer, you know, either permanently attached or attached at that moment. It will give you recommendations and you can just go with what it recommends. It'll, it'll generate like, um, it will, it will generate, I think I grouped, I'm just, sorry guys, trying to remember what I did a moment ago before this that worked well. Um, you can just click save like so if you don't yeah shape or calibrate so if you don't want to screw around with things you can just run shape or calibrate and honestly it does a pretty good job i i've used it quite a few times and it, it's it's done a pretty dang good job 
Okay, so now extrusion's flat. We're using our blocks, so these are right up against each other. I don't see how this can't be perfect. Okay, it's still lifting. Why is it lifting? I don't understand what's going on. Right as I want to get it towards the bottom, it is just, it's lifting like pretty, you, like I'm putting force down and it's still wanting to lift. I don't understand why. Okay, so I'm, I'm not fully tightening it. I've got it like still si kind of tight, but not fully. Let's see what happens if I try to tighten it this way, if it's going to lift again as well. Just trying to figure out what's going on. Okay, that felt like it went well. Uh, it's pretty damn flush. Hold on. I'll do one last. That was pretty good. Uh, we'll do one more clamp. I'm gonna clamp it vertically this time. Um, was the tap straight? I hope so. Are those extrusions flush on the bottom? Yeah, they should be. They should be flush. Let me loosen this one more time, just a hair. Okay. Yeah, that's like, I don't want to use the word perfect, uh, but it's flush. It's flat. No, it's not. It's not flat. I wonder if, I wonder if there's an issue with the extrusion. So this, instead of this lifting up, it lifted up this entire extrusion now. So I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that gap? Okay, so the only thing I can think of doing now is, is possibly clamping down both of them. Super odd. I don't, I don't understand why, it, why it's lifting. Let me try it here. Let me grab a different one of these extrusions and just see if the other extrusion plays nicer. The hole isn't centered. Finish the top of the frame and it'll even out. Yeah, let's just grab a different one of these because there's two more and just see if it goes the same way or not. So let me make sure I do this right so I don't do it wrong again. There we go. Okay, so that's, that's good. Clamped, clamped. We're gonna be doing that one. And yeah, we'll go like this. All right. That one's lifting too. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know guys. I'm sort of at a loss on this. 
Uh, random project related question. Don't use the clamp and push down while you're tightening. Okay. I'll try that. Well, I still think I could have used the clamp. No, I could. So, okay. The clamp I can still use because we're not clamping to the vertical. But I'll still, I will push down and see if that does anything. I just, I've never, I don't recall ever having them lift on me like this before. Okay, so now it's dropped like we want. It's very hard to keep it square if I'm pushing down on it. Okay, so I was able, that kind of worked. We're pretty damn flat. And I don't see I don't see the other extrusion having lifted. Let's see how it looks if I hold on. Let me do one last tight tighten on here. So maybe I just need to apply more downward force. Yeah, that's definitely not flat up against there because of the way I did that. Um okay. That seemed like that seemed like it might work. So let me clamp this against this, like so. It's definitely giving me a run for my money. Okay. It's hard with the camera here. I'm gonna move you guys, let's see, I'll move you guys back a little bit like this. Let's see if I can get in here. The clamp sucks because of what it's doing. Okay. I need I need it like another set of hands to push down on this extrusion. Yeah, there you go. It's starting to lift again right when it gets there. So at this point, at this point, I'm not sure what to do without. If I clamp, let's see, if I clamp this, you stay flat. Okay, and I push towards that. Maybe I can do it. Let's try this. Okay, we're relatively flat again. I don't know that how this is going to be. Ah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's, I mean, it's not bad. I, I'm not, I mean, uh, I still feel like we lifted a hair, but I don't really know what better we can do. Uh, is any of the extrusion square or flat or something with the screw? I, um, I could try giving a hand through the computer, <laughs> clamp both down. Clamp both down. Let's see, is there another way? I'm just trying to think, like, if we took this part, if we took this L piece off and laid it down, we could do that. Um, sort of like build it separately and then put it on here. But I think that's, I'm tempted to say that's what we're gonna get. Yeah, that feels, that feels flat to me. I think we're moving forward. That's, that's our, what was that? I wonder if it was the anodization. Like, um, so check this out. I don't know how well you can see, maybe you can't. Yeah, see how some of the anodization came off? It looked like, oops, it looked like from where I clamped it, I wonder if there was a bulge on this, on like in one of these extrusions. I'm not entirely sure, but it's just something, problem is the hole is getting larger. 
Uh, have you tried turning the extrusion around? Tried the, another screw. I find that some screws bind up a bit on the extrusion in a bad way. Yeah, there was there was debris. Which there wasn't because prior to this build, I cleaned this table. Like I wiped it down with IPA and took a razor blade to it to remove any um, to remove any super glue. So that had to have come from one of the extrusions. All right, let's see if we can get this piece on. What time is it? Um, all right, we gotta do a giveaway in like five minutes. So let me get this other part on this extrusion here. See how it goes, and then we'll do that. If you haven't entered in the giveaway, do so. Yeah, check for burrs just on the ends of them. Maybe that's why they give you the deburring tool. <laughs> but yeah, maybe that's what it was. I, I didn't. I definitely didn't see it prior to dropping it down. Then again, I wasn't exactly looking for it. All right. So the last thing should be. Going like this, clamping you to this. Yeah, that was a wild, uh, that was a wild ride. I, I don't think I've ever had an extrusion ride up on me like that. Like normally the weight of the extrusion helps me hold it down, but it, it was like fighting me, uh, which probably was because again, there was a piece or something. So let's see, this one should be Also, I shouldn't be using these drivers. I like the Fabrico drivers, but they tear my hands up um, when I'm clamping. So let's see. Here we go. Okay. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, that one sucked. Like that was that was that was a hell of a struggle. What's up, Panzer? I don't think it's easy to commercialize pre-built Vorons. Yeah, I, I think it's, they're not built for mass production. So I think that if someone's like, I know that um, tri tri Tridon, Tridune, what's the, the company that makes them? Um, they took it and like have slightly modified it. So I think that if you take like a Voron printer and you, you modify it for production or, or for like injection molding, then you can make it happen. But I don't, it wouldn't be a one-to-one, -one. like just to take it as is. It's just, it was designed to be 3D printed. Okay. Man, Tr what did I say, Trudon, Tridon? Yeah, Trudon. Uh, it's the Vivendino Tridune. Vivendino is a company behind Viv, wow, that is a lot. Vivendino Tridune, Vivendino, Vivendino. <laughs> is the company behind Formbot, okay. I think someone told me that recently and I forgot. All right, we're gonna take, we're gonna let everybody enter the giveaway. There's two minutes left and then we're gonna do that and then we'll get back to the frame. I need. You need to sit for just a minute here. That was not fun. I, I'm hoping that the other two don't go like that. But it feels flat. Like it, it I, I think that we ended up getting it in the end there. Um, maybe when I moved the extrusion one of the times, that little bit of debris made its way out of there and that's how it was finally able to lay flat. But um, hey, what's up, Rise? Uh, I actually can't remember. Oh crap, back extrusion is facing the wrong way. Wait, no, you're, no, you're joking. Back extrusion doesn't have any. Oh my God. I was like, the back extrusion doesn't have any like uh, hole or something like that. <laughs> uh, Vividino. I like the name. I don't know. I don't know that I like it for a printer, but like Vividino, it sounds cool. All right, sip of water. Sometimes building a printer feels a little bit like, um, like fighting a battle. <laughs> All right, I can get this stuff off of here. I don't want to. I'll shove this into the closet. All righty. Everybody has 60 seconds to enter the giveaway. If you have not, then then we're drawing. I'm going to remove the uh, link in three, two, and one. 
and I'll give you, give you another minute. 82 likes. If you have not hit the like button, please do. We got 125 viewers. I need the support. <laughs> I need the support. Look at Crowley. I love the new clip They try to lock stuff down so everything is preset up and more beginner friendly, but then many power users are rooting them for more customization. Yeah, it's kind of a hard. It's a hard place. Like I'm I'm testing out um I've been testing out the Elegoo Neptune 4 Pro and it's running Clipper and you technically can get into it. It's just an MKS skipper board, uh, slightly modified, so you can log into it. But it's it's intended pretty much to be used offline. And the screen they kept, like the UI, is the exact same screen UI they've used on like Marlin printers. And so you can use it, have it running Clipper. It doesn't have a, um, you can add an ADXL to it, but it's just got input shaping specific for that tool head. So kind of like what Proust is doing where it's not the most optimized input shaping because it's not tuned to your specific environment or what the printer is sitting on, but it's still much better than a printer that doesn't have a close input shaping. Uh, and it's, it's interesting, but at least with that one, it's all stock in terms of the login credentials. So you can go in and log in and do stuff while the crowd is, you know, you're having to do this hacky, hacky setup. Uh, I was changing my stream. I tried it and just realized the giveaway is up. The manufacturer lets users full access and get away. Okay, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. 93 likes. Thank you guys. Um, 112 entries. Unpin. Sorry, everybody. It's been up for like 40 minutes. It's at the top of chat. I can't remove it now. The Okay, I did remove it. All right, let me download responses. Almost there. Maybe not. Uh, recent? 3.02 PM, this should be it. There we go. Okay. Bear with me. Okay, so there is 110 entries. Something doesn't seem right. All right, I'm gonna redownload this. I don't want anyone that, um, there's supposed to be 112 people, so it's something foobard. Um, now there's 113. So let me let me really quickly redownload this. For everyone that did enter in, I wanna make sure you get, you're able to get in. Okay, downloads, yes. Extract all, yes. Extract, okay. Yeah, something went funky here. Um. Okay, let's see if this fixed it. It's not. It's... Oh, you know what? I think it's correct. Somebody entered in twice. Cause it, no, it is correct. So there's 111 people. When I download it, it doesn't keep dupes. So that's, that's the reason why. Yeah, 111, oh, that's right. Okay, that was a little more complicated than I liked. I learned that one time when someone entered in like four or five times. Okie dokie. So, um, as, as always, <laughs> uh, Hey, what's up LSC? Uh, huge shout out to Polymaker for being awesome and creating incredible filament and allowing us to do giveaways on the channel. And they've just supported a ton of projects and a ton of builds by supplying materials. 
Um, for anyone that's new, if you're in the US or Canada, you'll end up getting a gift card if you win that you can pick what you want. I think it's $35 plus shipping. Um, a zombie will correct me because I'm always wrong, but that sounds right. Uh, if you're not in the US or Canada, then you uh, pick a spool specifically, like the SKU, which will have the color and the type, and it's any PLA, ABS, ASA, or PTG, as long as it is not an exotic filament like a carbon fiber. Yeah, and uh, yeah, if you haven't tried Polymaker Filament and you want to, there are links in the description that uh, will take you over to their web shop, and it does support the channel, so it's always appreciated. I think that's it. Um, we took, he had, see, so Jackson had his four month checkup on Friday. And he got his second set of shots and he turned cherry red, which was super sad. But the first set of shots, he cried for like two hours straight. This set, I picked him up and I bounced him and he was excellent. He was only sad for like 30 seconds, but he weighed 15 pounds and 13 ounces. So we're gonna do, no, no, no. Okay, we'll do, he was 24, 24 inches long. So we'll do 24, 24 shuffles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24. Good luck, everybody. Three and two, and here we go. Looks like Robert Stewart. Robert, you are our winner. Let's go here, some confetti action, a little air horn, a little cheery. Congratulations, Robert. So I will send you an email today. Um, I'll do my best to do it today, just because family's in town and they're leaving tomorrow morning. It's kind of crazy, but uh, I will I will send you an email today. So congratulations, and uh, thank you, everybody, for partaking. All righty. So welcome back, my old friend. Let's, let's, get, this, let's get this going. Uh, so we've got more B extrusions and more A extrusions. So let's go, let's make sure. Okay. We're going to check the ends, right? That's what we said. So these look good. Yeah. A little bit of the anodization. God, my nose is so itchy for some reason. Um, a little bit of the anodization on the ends, uh, are kind of chippy. And I think that's, what's actually potentially causing the issue. Um, uh, yeah, it really might be what's causing the issue. So uh, let's make sure we've got, let's see, we're gonna make sure we've got the holes facing the right direction. So if this is the back, we want to make sure that the hole is facing, so this this one right here is facing towards the front. So that should be good. We also need another, I think just an A, yeah, just an A extrusion. So there should be no holes, just a standard. Standard extrusion, so we'll drop you like that. Hope my work is correct. And then the same thing with this one, the hole is going towards that way. Now the fun begins. Okay, so again, as long as as long as we don't have liftoff, I'm confident that we're gonna be fine. Uh, he ends up answering my question. I guess I'll keep sticking with no color extrusions. Oh, because is it because of the issues with anodizing them? Yeah, this is the first, again, if that's what it was, this is the first issue really that I've had. Um, and it might have just been that single extrusion, but I don't I don't see what else it could be. I, I know that last time I was told, clean your table, and which was a good call, because there's some super glue that gets stuck and things like that from the projects, and that can cause issues when you're trying to flatten things out. Um, so there was nothing on this table, that I can guarantee. So I don't know where else that... Um, I don't know where else that bit of, it looked like metal, you know, debris could have came from other than the extrusion, so. And that would explain the lifting when I was tightening it. What the hell was that? Oh, I guess it was partly attached to the desk. You know what it could have been? It could have been, yeah, from when they drilled out the hole for the screw, and then when I was punching the screw through it or putting the screw through it, it, it there was that metal that fell out and got wedged between the extrusions. This is theory. I, I don't know definitively, um, but it sounds good. Okay, so now we're gonna do the same thing, which is with our one, two, three block right here like this. Oop, don't smack yourself in the face. And then we'll clamp this down. Uh, LC said, uh, it's when they do the threads 
we have the same issue. Yeah, that's probably what it was then. I just haven't experienced it before, so I didn't know. I, and I didn't see anything uh, when I grabbed them, so I didn't know what the heck was going on. I just knew that my my vertical extrusion was trying to lift off and it's causing issues. So let's move you over here like so. And then let's do our best to Guess what? Our extrusion's not trying to fly away. Oh, it kind of is actually. <laughs> I spoke too soon. It's not not as much as the previous one, but at least we know now that again, I, I just I've got to apply downward force on these for some reason. More than more than I recall ever doing before. Okay, that looks good. All right, let's take off this clamp. Yep, that feels good. Well, that was a hell of a lot easier than the previous extrusion, I'll tell you that. Okay, so now that we got that, this one should just be a matter of clamping you like this and clamping you onto this. Like that. Uh, will you be getting an XL? I I'm not. I had pre-ordered it initially, but as time progressed, maybe it was my like impulsive initial purchase, uh, like mindset that changed or just that I didn't see, everything I saw about it was not that exciting. Like it got, you know, just tons of delays and just, I got, I got less and less excited about it. And I got the Snapmaker J1, which is an IDEX printer, not a tool changer, but it's, it's done like, I don't have a need for the XL other than it's cool and it'd be fun to make content on it. Like dual extrusion is plenty for support material or matching two materials up. Um, yeah, so that's, that's basically where I'm at. Yeah, I just don't, you pulled extrusions up from the table while clamping. Wait, what? Oh my God. So I did. Good call. So maybe I don't need to clamp this at all and I just need to hold it in place like this. This is probably plenty at this point. Thank you for seeing that. These are the things that like I wouldn't have seen. Let's see. Yeah, I think that's pretty damn good. And then let me feel. Mm. Let me loosen it one last time. Apply a little bit more pressure. That's about right. <laughs> Again, it's like it's getting to that point where uh, big info, everyone. July UPS will go on strike. Oh, interesting. I didn't. I haven't heard that about UPS. Oh, you know, maybe I did hear that about UPS on. I'm not sure that this is getting any better. I think I'm getting to the point where I'm just sort of doing Yeah, we're calling it on this one. That's as good as I am getting it. All right. Yeah, it's not it's not clamped down. This is clamped down, but that wasn't clamped down. I know. So we have one last edge and then their base is done. 
this is our final final one. <clears throat> How are you finding Cyborg as a company? As a company, they've been awesome. Um, the I've had contact with both like uh, one of the main engineers, and I don't know don't exactly know the other person's role, but um, the thing that's been a big deal to me is how well they've handled feedback. They've been very open to like, hey, I don't think this is a good idea, or hey, I think this is a good idea, I like this, I don't like this, and they've been very quick to implement changes, and that's not just with me, like, uh, I know Greg had made quite a few suggestions early on, and they've really implemented it, so I wouldn't say that, like, their kits are perfect but like they're constantly making them better and striving to get closer to that so i generally think that for price to what you get it seems like a great deal um i mean clearly we're having some issues with this um clearly we're having some issues with this frame right now um at least it seems like it but that's been my experience so far and from what we looked at the kit i mean this looks like it's going to be once we get beyond this a nice kit Uh, also, definitely not true to accuse them of stealing everything. They came up with a lot of clever stuff. Basically, anybody else was doing different. Wait, what are we missing out on? Oh, are we, are we talking about bamboo? Uh, the winding of oof, after stealing basically a bunch of okay, three smalls. Thank you for is even worse than bamboo. Let's see, I'm just gonna move you guys to this side this time. I don't know how much you'll be up. Ah, I lied. I'm right-handed. I can't. I can't do it like that. Okay. Oh, that's right. Damn. I've got to. Okay. I forgot. I've got to hold it down again. Let's first get this closer in, I guess. Okay. Yeah, it looks flat. That feels pretty damn good to me. All right, last side. <clears throat> Let's see if we can get this to not lift off. He said it lifted last time, so maybe it's because I went too low and the grippy pads did that. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's lifting now. Okay. Yeah, that worked well. Sick! All right. What's next? <clears throat> That's good. Okay, E extrusion. Did we mark that? We did. It says cover. Uh, we'll be using an extrusion as a spacer. Apply a single layer of tape to the ends to prevent scratching. If you're not confident the length of the squareness of your extrusions, print the spacer instead. So I don't think I have the printed spacer. Anyone that's built a trident, can we use, like, does it matter the kind of tape? Can we use this? Um, can we use this painter's tape or this uh, masking tape? What videos have you got planned for the coming weeks? You have to wait and find out. You have to wait and find out, Dutch. Let's see, cover tape. If you're not confident the length. Yeah, it says tape. Cover and tape. We'll be using this extrusion as a spacer. Apply a single layer of tape towards the end to prevent scratching. It's only to prevent scratching, usually any tape. Okay, cool. We'll just do a tiny little piece of, of uh, masking tape then. Painters and gaffers. All right. So I'm just gonna get this and place a little piece 
on the end. Don't know if it matters that I fold it over. We'll find out soon enough, but we're gonna attempt. We're gonna fold it over for right this second. Okay. Um, so now it says finding the right position. If you're building a 250 size trident, use the 330 millimeter E extrusion as a spacer to locate the Y extrusion. If you're building a 250 size trident, use the 330 E extrusion. Uh, apparently you can put in a spacer. Okay. So. Oh, interesting. And so this is where, so this is the back. Uh, and so it's going in between the back and the front. That makes sense. So this won't work. Okay, so this won't work at all for this. I said, I said, uh, you gotta wait, you gotta wait and find out, Dutch. Blue painter's tape or white, works fine, painter's tape's okay, back. Uh, please be aware the UPS strike is not certain until the end of the negotiations. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, that's good to know, though. Yeah, installing the extrusions for the Y-Rail. Um, does that, does he have a nut bracket bar? I, I don't. Um... But yeah, I'm just thinking if this because this extrusion's not gonna work um, because I'm not building a 250. Since I'm not building a 250, I'm wondering what I should do. Do I lay it on its side? Because if I lay it on its side, I just need to know the length, and I can do that. You only put tape on one side. Yeah, well, I don't think we're gonna be able to use it because from what I'm seeing here, like, gosh, I'll do these. Some lengths, same length as the rear one. Okay, what length was the rear one? Um, the rear one was... Was the H extrusion then. And so... The H extrusion, is, is it the same size as the E extrusion? No, the E extrusion is what I just grabbed, right? You have G extrusion, F extrusion, and D extrusion. That's definitely not right. That's too short. That's too long. That's too short. So we don't have an extrusion. Wait a minute. Yeah, we don't have an extrusion that's the same length as that. Uh, have you missed anything major? Not really. We had a little bit of trouble with one of the corners of the frame, and then the rest of it's going good. The thing I'm trying to figure out now, though, is it's looking like it's saying there should be something that's the same height as this that I sort of use as a... Um, you know what? Unless there's a different one. Let's see. No, none of these are going to work. See, so the only thing I can think of, then, is I need to know what height I need to measure. I need to lay this down. Did you use the correct rear extrusion? I thought that I did. Um, I'm pretty sure I did. So the H extrusion should be the same no matter what build you're doing. And that's what was supposed to go into here was the H extrusion. So I don't see what I don't see what else could have gone there. Oh, you guys can't see what I'm doing. Yeah. So basically, um, out of these, according to the green line, build size dependent. The H extrusion is not build size dependent. Does it say anywhere what the lengths of these extrusions are? I don't think I saw that. I know. Again, I know that they're. It depends, but so the E should be longer. I don't think any... Is it the center one you already used? If that's the case though, what goes there? Like, I, I don't... I don't know what else would go there. If, if I can find out what the length of the H extrusion is, I can verify it. But I don't know... 
Um, let me see if I go here. Let's try something. Try and keep spawn. Uh, configure manual printers source and guide. Why can't I see the bottom of this? Interesting. Can you hide the toolbar? That's kind of annoying. Alright, well, for some reason we can't... We can't see the bottom of this if I go full screen, so we're gonna have to go... like this. Trident. Frame. Mm, no, is there a separate output panels? Miscellaneous frame. Vertical extrusion. All right, here we go. So. So which one is it? There should only be one of them. Ah, uh, size dependent, each configurator. Yeah, I'm confused. If the printer is not stock Z, then you can't do that. Cyborgs? Yeah, this is the stock Z. So it's a, it's a 250 or two, yeah, 250, right? Is what we said. So it's the 300 millimeter kit. I thought we looked at it and it said 250. Uh, having that weird once in a blue moon while the clock entry leveling gets worse versus better. Print the printed part. Oh. So, okay, if that's the case, maybe the kit came with it then. I didn't realize that the printed piece. Hold on. Okay, here it is. So cover and tape. If you're not confident in the length and squareness of your extrusions, print the spacer instead. So let me see if we go under one trident, we got STLs. I'm curious if the kit came with it then. Can we just go, is there a way to do this without? Just measuring how long your Z screws are and remove 50 millimeters and you have your Z height. Oh, that's true, huh? I could, I guess I could do that. But I'm still just trying to figure out STLs. Uh, Z assembly. Is it not in the Z assembly? Would this be under nozzle probe, rail stop, carriage left, tools, drill guide. Okay, 110 millimeter alignment spacer. That sounds right. Okay, so this is what it looks like. So let's see if the kit came with it. Because if it didn't, then that's something I definitely want to provide feedback with. It might be the same way as a solid fork where you measure of the top rail. Yeah, I'm I'm that's what I was saying too. If the um if the guide had like just a measurement from the top, I could measure it, but I, I don't know, I didn't see any measurements, which was really throwing me off. Okay, so let's see. This is all extra stuff, so I don't think it's in this one. I think it'd be in the other skirts. Uh, looks like the extruder. Skirts, 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 and panel clips. So if not in here. Oh, Jesus, don't fall. Okay. Um, okay, stealth burner parts. Screen parts. This, uh, yeah, I don't see anything. Stealth burner parts. I don't see a part that we need. Uh, add Z height to the part to make your life easier. Wait, add Z height 
to the part to make it. Oh, you're saying because it's so thin, this piece? 110 millimeter alignment spacer. So this basically what? Just hooks on over. Hold on. This basically just hooks on over the top, those vertical extrusions, and. And then hooks onto the. I don't even understand what this, this guy is. If there was just a, if there was just a, uh, a length, it'd be a lot easier. I think I've got, let me see. I think I have the Creality. I think the K1's got ASA in the garage and it's got a camera in here. We'll load it up. The X1's, I haven't plugged it back in. Gotcha. So you're saying make this taller. You think like double? Go four mil instead of two mil. Print two with added Z height. It goes between the bottom of the top extrusion and the top of the Y rail. Go eight. Okay. Not, I can't copy paste, it's not a thing. Clear all, auto range, reset. How do I make one more of you? Control C, Control V, no. Right click, clone model, there we go. Yes. Okay. Import, select, auto range, great. Uh, K1, generic ABS. Uh, that's, we don't need ERCF standards, we'll just go normal. Slice. Land printing, confirm. Device list is empty. Oh, I was like, that doesn't, that doesn't sound right. Whoa, is it tripping out? That was weird, I don't know what happened there. All right, one click printing. We do need to do print calibration, otherwise the, there we go. All right. So while that's going, can we do anything else? I really wanted to get, you getting a K1. I've had a K1 for probably two months now. I, I was, I got a K1 really early on, um, but I got one of the K1s that had an extruder issue and I swapped it out. And then I was talking with them about Clipper, asking what was going on with that. And they were supposed to release the Clipper source code. So as of right now, I, I just, I have it, but I don't, have any plans of making content on it which they said they were fine with i, I said they because initially they made some changes from the early ones too and the, my contact knows that when if slash when they release the clipper code then they're going to send one and i'll be fine but for right now yeah i just i have one but it just lives in the dungeon it's been pretty good it's been pretty good dutch just for regular printing uh, you will need to tell Cyborg that non-250 bed printers need the spacer. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's... There's always something. Um, always something. Okay, well. What else can we do then? So we can't do our cross beams, which is unfortunate. Uh... Well, I guess I could loosely slide them, right? So right now I can just, I can loosely slide these two in and then we can at least do the top. Or no, maybe we can't because of the way that jig works. Oh, it's frustrating. That's a bummer. I don't know, I don't know what to do. I feel like, spacers. Yeah, I'm likely gonna end up just doing the frame. I mean, all that's left is two of these guys going crisscross. 
slide the wide extrusions in and complete the tops. Well, the, the, the question I have though, Delmar, the jig works with the top note, you need to do... Oh, you're just saying the jig would work? Gotcha, so I can continue and the jig hooks on. Let me look at it one more time. What does this thing look like? I'm trying to understand the way, where did it go? That's not it. These little hooks here, so they grab onto the slot of the extrusion. Uh, you space this is the top extrusion. It's only 110 millimeters. Gotcha. So you're saying we can do what I what I suggested, which is just slide these on and go for it. Like do the top, because if that's the case, and that's awesome, it makes me happy that I only have to do the two. So I wanted to get at least the frame done, and it's like. Okay. Try not to scratch the crap out of the inside. Sounds like you're saying this will work, Delmar. I would tape the bottom extrusions to keep, wait. Oh, take to the bottom extrusions to keep. I can't read it because the the emoji in the corner. You seem to keep them from sliding. I think I need to shorten the bolts a little bit more. Yeah, okay. I'm picking up what you're putting down. We'll do that then. So I need to make the bolts a little bit tighter though, so that way they, they'll slide. Okay, or maybe the looser is the thing I need to do. All right, well, I can't get it perfectly flush, it doesn't seem. Pop out chat for the win emoji is in the way. Well, I, I have the chat popped out and it's still in the way. I, I always run the chat that way. Okay, this is kind of annoying. I might not be taping them no more. Yeah, they're just not going. I don't want to pull them tight until the end because it's going to scratch the inside of the extrusion. So um, here's what we'll do. We have a lot of tape, so we can just... Just tape it like this. Because the tape, is, it's not gonna be in the way. Uh, next time there's someone with YouTube jacket on in the local Kobe shop, I'll give them shit about his emoji blocking. Where do you see people the YouTube jackets and say coffee shop? I guess I don't really go to coffee shops. Oh, come on tape. Doesn't have to be pretty. Okay, so now that those are in place, they're not gonna be sliding around, wreaking havoc, hopefully. We can flip this around, this. And we can drop our extrusions in, and we can at least get this, this frame built. Uh, or do you rough 110 millimeters on the top and tighten them with a square? I think this will, oh man, maybe you're right. It probably is better to not do the tape because if it's having a hard time sliding, that's because this area is tighter. And if I tighten up this side, 
it's gonna have to slide all the way back down. So you're probably right, even if it's not even close, if I just tighten it where the holes are, yeah, that's a better idea. Okay, so forget the tape idea. It doesn't have to be where it needs to be really. Uh, I just need to get it where I can tighten it from those holes. So let's move, move. It sounded good in theory. Okay, so let's slide this down. Try not to scratch anything. Okay, and then we're gonna go through the blind joints and we're just going to use the wrong driver. Uh, no, 130 millimeters have to add to add for the 2020. Oh. Okay, so these are not straight or anything at all. I don't really care. I just, I just want them to not move and to at least be accessible by the blind, blind joint. There we go. That should be fine. Yeah, they're very crooked, but that's totally fine. One part plus 20 millimeters. Yeah. Does that, that mean though that you're saying that the uh, the jig isn't going to work, or is it? I. Uh, but there are creators with YouTube merch on all over the world. We also uh, that's fair, I guess. You wouldn't know, like my merch, unless you know, you don't. You, you wouldn't know that it's YouTube. There's nothing. Just says Modbot, but. It doesn't say YouTuber like that. There we go. Okay. Ba -doom, ba -doom. Jiggle work. Uh, just give a work around. Okay. There's a chance the jig works. <laughs> Thank you very much <laughs> it's very helpful all righty perfect cool. all right so now we're just going to drop these onto these extrusions <clears throat> Maybe. Oh, this one needs to go in further. There we go. Uh, what you use for merch store? Uh, stream elements. I've been I've been pretty happy with it. Um, anyone I know that's gotten merch has been pretty happy with the uh, quality and all that. Um, and also they have like it's print on demand, and so they have places all over the globe, depending on where you order from, that it, it's made and shipped from. So, like, um, shipping's pretty quick, no matter where you are, because of that, so. All right. But Modbot merch, it's amazing. Thank you, zombie. <laughs> oh, bye. Okay, so we'll clamp here. And we'll clamp here, and that should be hopefully sufficient. Okay, let's get our clamps on. I'm feeling better about this though. I need to do, I, I just, I don't know. Someone needs to remind me before we do another build after this, like watch my, watch this video. So that way I can relive the initial frustration followed by the aha moment. So I'm pretty sure this is exactly what we did on the 2.4, but if I only had remembered it, we wouldn't have had to go through maybe like half an hour of what is happening. Okay, that's good. That's good. Get our little block. You go like this. Okay. Oh, drop this stuff. Okay. Coming around to this side. 
Got to move you guys again. Oops. Okay, so this part I push, that's right, I push down to keep it from lifting and towards the block. Okay. Pretty happy with that. So much easier now. Now, like, now that I, again, now that I remember, although this is different than before, I guess. We, we didn't use a one, two, three block last build, so. Now this, if I go like this, it should be perfect. As long as I don't, let's see, clamp it too low. Oh, so that's the issue, okay. So I need to hold this down, all of this down while I clamp it. Uh, do they include the rail jigs in the kit? That's a great question. Um, if they didn't, I think I still have them. I think I still have them from the 2.4, but that, that's a great question. I didn't see them in my little peak right there, but um, that doesn't mean that they weren't in there. I might have just not seen them. Sweet, happy with that. On this side, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go for it, guys. Um, try to speed things up a little bit. So I'm gonna clamp you here. Clamp you. So just doing the exact same thing we just said. I'll even go, I'll even go like this. Change the camera angle. Oop, come on. Still learning to clamp. There we go. Ah, crap. Too close. Okay. Oh, I don't like that. There we go. Good. Uh, orange pie. Uh, we're going to try the orange pie. And if it ends up being an issue, then we can do raspberry. Yeah, I thought you, you used orange pie on your 2.4, right? Nice, because that's what it came with. I thought, um, if I remember correctly, I thought you had an issue initially, and then you ended up figuring it out. Was it with Wi-Fi, or what was the issue? I have a mem I have like a brief memory of you having an issue initially, and and you got it figured out. I think. Wait, this isn't how I did the other one, is it? No, I went like this. Yeah. No, this doesn't feel right, but either way, we've got enough clamps to where this is gonna work. Yeah, looks good. Okay, so let's flip this around now. Boom. Uh, I replaced it. Oh, so you didn't got bad experience with the orange pie. Interesting. Why do they name it orange pie? I've never heard of an orange pie. The uh, orange pie three light is easy to work with. Just none of, just not a lot of grunt. Don't use cam and input shaper at the same time. Interesting. Okay. What was your? What were the issues you had? Nice. Uh, let's slide this. I thought I thought you used it for a while. That's good to know though. I'll try it. I mean, I'll try it since it's what comes with the kit, but I'll keep that in mind too, that it might be problematic. It's... Nope, I'm clamping it to the table. That's what we're doing wrong. Uh, I'm using a CB109. Yeah, I have. Um, actually, no, never mind. That board doesn't have a house, I think. Because um, MakerBase sent the Monster, I think it's called the Monster 8. It's an 8 driver board. 
Um, but it doesn't, it also, it would be the same thing. It doesn't have a, uh, what's it called? Uh, uh, Bitrutech. I have a Bitrutech Pi. I do have a Bitrutech Pi. And I'm not using, well, the issue is though, if I end up going touchscreen, right? Cause touchscreen, it would need HDMI. Although I could do that, but I do have a Bitrutech Pi. And currently this is not going to have a touchscreen. It's going to have the 12864. So I could go that route. Cause we were going to use that on the 2.4, but we didn't do to do do, um, due to the due to it not being compatible with whatever DSI or CSI it was. MMC memory crash and mostly software problems. Gotcha. That sucks. Uh, no, this is, I'm hoping that's not the case. Uh, I'm hoping that's not the case. Did you give them feedback? Um, nice. Why are we not grabbing our bolt? Oh shit. There's no hole. This extrusion doesn't, didn't go all the way through when they, when they drilled it. I'm like, why what's happening? I guarantee you this is probably a similar thing to what happened when we had an issue earlier. So I need to I mean, it might be, it might be almost there. The EMMC on them is the weak point. You either get a good board or not. Gotcha. Um, okay, well, at least this is loose. But yeah, I can't. Uh, that I, I guarantee. So check it out. Now I'm convinced this is exactly what happened. So this just fell out, this just fell out of it. Um, and this is probably what we saw is that I was trying to screw through this. And so that's what fell underneath it. And that's what was causing it to rise up. And then from me clamping on it enough times, it's what caused it to sort of just break down. But it's from when they punched the extrusions, there's a tiny bit of residue now in two of them. So that's something worth checking. Yeah, now we should be golden. Yeah, I can see right through it. So, um, mystery kind of solved there. I think I've seen that before. Yeah, I, I haven't experienced that before, but I, something I should probably start checking. Um, I mean, luckily it's, it's at least punched through, right? And it, it wasn't like I have to go out and drill through the rest of the extrusion, but that's something that should be, they should be clearing those pockets. I'll definitely let, let them know. Always check your extrusion holes. <laughs> All righty, let's try this again. Um, this is how I did it, yeah. There we go. Now I feel a screw tightening. Okay. Oh, I guess I didn't tighten that as much as I thought that I had. Yep, that feels good.
Okay, so we have three more screws need to be tightened. And then we're, I think, done until we do the gantry, which will be next. Let's see. So now we need to drop you over to here like this, and we'll tighten you like this. Nope. Yeah, that extrusion. So I got to hold down on that extrusion, otherwise it rides up. A lot of things to think about and consider. Um, that looks pretty good. Oh no, it's no, that's not pretty good. What's going on here? So it's twisting the extrusion, which is definitely not good. Okay, that feels better. Okay. Yep, that feels good. One last corner. Uh, I didn't know I'm gonna leave so I'm tired. Hey, no worries, man. It's uh, we're at the three hour mark and we're probably, once I get this last corner done, we'll probably start to wind down. Um, let me see how far along we are with that last piece. Uh, ah, we're 71%, so we might actually be able to do that as well. But yeah, we're, we're getting close. Hey, thank you for hanging out, man. I appreciate it. Thank you for the gifted subs, uh, her gifted memberships earlier. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Actually, I need to do this last corner. Hopefully, hopefully you feel rested when you go back to work from vacation. I need to order some one, two, three blocks. Yeah, I am. Um, it's been on my list for a while. I've had ever since I made the at least the soup can video. I had quite a few comments, and either they were like absolutely loving the use of Campbell's chicken noodle soup to level a gantry or they were telling me that I should probably get one two three blocks so after the last build I finally got them and I they're rad I mean I like them better than the machinist squares I mean machinist squares are cool for getting in and kind of verifying things but these are precise enough for at least what you know I'm doing and it's going to be as good as clamping to this will be as good if not better than me trying to eyeball things Yeah, it took me again. Took me, we saw it took me a bit to figure out what the heck I was doing with these things, but I feel like now, um, we're doing much better. Okay. Once again, pull this down. It. Okay. Let's try not to get the extrusions to lift on me. Uh, 6 a.m. here for rack. Check diag diagonals for rack. Yeah. Uh, what happened? We were in Switzerland. They only use pink killers. Nobody sells a chrome or polished frame. You mean for like, like a printer frame? Or for the one, two, three blocks you're just talking about? Okay, hopefully that's good. Yeah, that is. Okay, last one. This one just needs to go right here. And the key thing is, again, no twisting of the frame. Push it down as you're tightening it so it can't ride up. There we go. And that should be basically just going for it. Yeah, that feels good. All right, unclamping, clamp, cl yeah, dude, you man, right when you left, you took the luck with you, man. <laughs> so, um, I felt like after the first one, the struggle of the first corner, I felt confident. I was like, all right, I've got this now. So I moved on to the second one, and okay, that feels good. Yes. Um. So yeah, you can see me. So I'm also gonna take out my stool for a second. Um, we started on the second corner, okay, Steve? And I I did the clamps like I had just figured out with the first one. I was like, this is great. And then the extrusion was completely riding up on me. So when I was getting to the final portion of tightening it, the extrusion 
would just move. And, and I mean, even with me putting downward force on it, like I usually just a little bit of force, gravity does the rest with the weight of it, but like it was, it was riding up like uh, at least three to five millimeters. And so I took the extrusion, I twisted it to try the other direction to see if it would, if it would make any difference. It didn't, I tried a different extrusion and it did the exact same thing. And um, I ended up using downward force more so, like pulling more force onto it. Uh, but the issue ended up being, where the hell did it go? I think I might've just kicked it off the table. Um, oh, here it is. This is what the issue ended up being. And I didn't realize it until I just saw it happen a second time. <clears throat> this was my issue. That is from where they drilled out the extrusion. So this must have been in there when I was trying to do the second corner um, and it must have popped out and gotten wedged in between the two extrusions. So when I'm trying to do that final bit of tightening, it was raising the extrusion up this much because it was basically crushing aluminum. Uh, so yeah, and I, I just, and I didn't know even after it happened because I had put so much force and tried tightening it, it had, it had essentially like broken this down. So all I saw was some metal powder and like, like a little bit of residue on the surface, but I didn't know what it was. And I knew it was from the extrusions because I just cleaned this before this build, but it wasn't until we did this final extrusion or maybe the one before it, where I, when I went to shove the driver through it, I hit a, I hit a wall and I saw that this was still in there. And then it, it sort of clicked on me that that's exactly what happened. It must've been, there was another one that was in there and that's what was blocking it. So that caused quite a bit of, <laughs> got quite a bit of frustration. Other than that, we're good. Um, I'm printing out, the little jigs for these, the Y extrusions, because um, they didn't include, they didn't include the printed parts for it. And because this isn't, I guess, the 250 build, uh, the the extrusion that you would use isn't isn't gonna work. So yeah, I mean, I'm glad we figured it out, but yeah, it was definitely driving me a bit crazy. Cause it, some were suggesting that maybe the holes weren't centered or the extrusions weren't flat, which very well could have been. Um, so I'm glad we got it, but it was definitely a little bit of a, what the hell moment. So we got three minutes left on the uh, little jigs for the Y extrusion. So we'll sit tight. I'm gonna grab some water actually, and maybe like a granola bar. And then I'll grab those. We'll co I'll come back when it's done. I'll grab those. We'll get the Y extrusions on. And then we're basically done. I think we're done on the frame until we do, uh, until we do the gantry. Uh, let me see here. Yeah, so we did that. Check for squareness, yes, and check across, which I will do. And then, yeah, run AB. Yeah, so then we're basically building the gantry. So, yeah, if we can get the Y rails on or the Y extrusions on and we've got this cube done, I'll feel, I'll feel at least pretty happy that we got the frame done. I would put the frame on its side when you do, uh, when you do that with the jigs. Okay, I will. Yeah, let me, I'm gonna take my mic off for a second. I'm gonna go refill the water and then uh, again, grab a granola bar and I'll be right back. I think we're gonna have an early dinner, so I don't want to have a like one of the clip bars so that kind of filling. So I just got string cheese and some granola balls. Um, extrusion work. What's everyone having for supper? We're gonna go out to uh, we're gonna go out to dinner. There's a Mexican restaurant up the street because since Aaron's sister flies home in the morning, figured we'd do like one final final dinner out. Um, so yeah, I think they're out shopping at. I think we're gonna go look at antique stores when I started streaming. 
Mm. Oh, they're home. Hmm, the print's done. I'll be right back. The rear extrusion should be able to use on any build. Oh, so you're saying, I should have, yeah, the rear extrusion would work. So you're saying take off that rear extrusion and just use it? Let's, let me go grab those jigs and see, see how those work. Um, since we printed them, I'll be right back. Okay. Whew. I mean, you can take it off the bolts are in there, but those jigs will be fine too. Okay, so as far as oh, this is so this is all it is. They just need to go on the side. You said you said lay them down, Delmar. You think it'll be easier to lay them down? But it looks like. I wasn't sure looking at them how they sat, but it looks like they're just going to be going from the side and you press them up against this part. So we'll do one on this side, one on that side. <clears throat> oh shit. Oh my God. I'm glad I didn't flip over my glass of water. Okay, so it seems like that's what we're doing, right? Dropping one on one side, dropping one on the other side. So like that, let's loosen these up. Um, one of the remaining extrusions can be used as well from the bottom extrusion, maybe a little bit more accurate. No, the, the extrusions don't fit. I tried because this isn't like a 250 or whatever. Um, none of them, none of them are the right height, height. They're all like, this one has a huge gap. This one overshoots it. This one has a huge gap and this one overshoots it. So yeah, we tried, we tried earlier. Yeah, on the, on the cube, on the 300 millimeter cube, it might work, but this is 250 high uh, and 300 by 300. So it just doesn't, it just doesn't work. Now I appreciate the, you know, suggestion though. Cause if it did, I'd rather use an extrusion. Okay. So I'm loosening, loosening that up. I need to loosen up the other side as well. Should I clamp these two together? Like, I'm wondering if I should put these on the very ends and then clamp these two. What do we think? I would imagine it would be pretty square. Just don't over tighten the Y extrusions. Otherwise you could have a problem. Don't ask me how I know. Okay, good to know. Yeah, I'm thinking about just doing like taking these little guys. I guess I don't even have to overly clamp it, but if I do one like this with a jig here holding up against this extrusion. Did I break it? What just happened? 
no, I didn't. But yeah, I would think this would work fine. Clamp on them. Wait, clamp on them, not off them. You're saying like do what I'm doing right now, right? I mean, I'm, I'm clamping right where the jigs are on the extrusions. Yeah, these, uh, these, <laughs> this is Delmar. Delmar made a good call when he told me to scale these jigs up. They're normally two millimeters and he told me to, okay, cool, I'm doing it right. Uh, he told me to scale them up um, to eight millimeters and that there's no way this would be, what I'm doing right now wouldn't work with the stock, um, Height, uh, they would be. They'd probably snap. I mean, uh, maybe up against the extrusion, but it would be. It would certainly be sketchier. Okay, so I think that's good. Yeah, I think this will work. Uh, I just hold it and tighten the screws. Stock flexes. Too much. I need more. Yeah, Delmar. Everyone. Everyone needs a Delmar. Delmar, a Steve, a Tad, a, an Aaron. Okay. I'm not even gonna move this. I'm just gonna duck under my camera. Oh geez. Come around to this side. Hold this down like this. And tighten, tighten it in. Now, will I be able to get my jigs out? That is the question. Yes, yes we will. Beautiful. I love it. That's, I, I'm, I'm happy with that. That was awesome. Okay, so now we'll flip it, rinse and repeat. Good call on that, Delmar. I, it would have been, I would have I would have just held it had we gone with the thinner ones, but being able to clamp it sort of takes some of the guesswork out of it and just lets you know that, hey, it's, it's gonna be pretty damn square with your top rail. Uh, measuring out for fun. I mean, just with like, let's see. Why are we wobbling? It's odd. Wobble on that side, but. Uh, so we're at a hundred and just shy of 150. Is it like 149? Yeah, I'd say we're at 149 on this side. Oh. And on this side. It's 14. They're exact. They're both 149. 149 from the top. Is one millimeter going to kill me? I mean, they're both the exact same. Uh, from earlier, did the 1, 2, 3 blocks against it chip the paint? I don't No, I don't think so. You mean when... You mean when there was that issue? That was from the hole. <laughs> yeah, these sides definitely don't look very flat. Top and bottom looks great. Top and bottom is really solid. So I don't know about the sides. but I'm really happy about top and bottom. So I think I'm just gonna roll forward with it. There's no wobble at all on top or bottom, but yeah, sides, sides definitely uh, not, not super square. <clears throat> uh, you'll, you'll, you know, my just doing your first mesh, it's printed in Trident Town. Wait, you'll need, you'll use a micro adjuster when you get your first smashes pin in the Trident Discord. Oh, you're talking about for a tweaked frame? I think I've seen it, Delmar. I, I, someone sent, I think you sent me that, right? Uh, I think you sent me that when I was doing, when I was having those funky issues with the um, Mercury 1.1 and it was the frame that was like skewed. Yeah, I don't think I, I don't think I'm gonna be getting this any better. Um, like I think I think if I tried to square it anymore, like it wouldn't get any better. Cause we we had this clamp completely flat. And again, top and bottom, which is what we rested it on as we were tightening it, were great. Dude, this is not 
It's being kind of a pain in the ass. There we go. Come on. There we go. Okay. I think I think you sent it to me, Domar. If it's is it regarding a tweaked frame, like a twisted frame? I I saw it when I was, I thought you sent it to me. I, I've seen it though. That's what it is. Yeah, that was a while ago. Yeah, it was it was twenty twenty two. Yeah, once I get this on, I can measure diagonally. Definitely diagonal wobble. Although all things considered with how big this frame is, I don't know that I'm that upset by it. Okay. Yeah, bottom's still perfectly flat and top. Okay, so do I have a measure that can go across this frame? Um, there it is. Yep. Oh. Okay. Uh, it would both enclose the printer and make it automatically straight as long as their machines cut straight. Wait, I wonder how much it would cost to just have some slots milled to get rid of all this my measuring. Heck. Uh, maybe it should be... Purple, great. I hope my wife doesn't watch the stream. <laughs> What's up, John? Happy Wednesday. It's, a, it's like a chrome purple, too. Okay, so I'm just going to measure from... I guess from diagonal, right? Like, sh shove this right there. Um, I'd rather go this, oh shit, I'd rather go this way. Okay, so I can't go from point to point, so we go from inner point to inner point. So we are looking at 590. I'm gonna stay like right at 595 from corner to corner on that side. 595 on this side. We are uh, not 595. We are, I'm gonna say 594. Yeah, so there's about a millimeter difference diagonally. But I don't think, I really don't think taking it apart and putting it back together would get it any flatter. I think it's going to be okay. Uh, well, this kid's, this kid's toy is going to be super durable. I use the Vorn print it for it. So <laughs> both enclosed printer. Um, uh, printers, codename Purple Nurple. <laughs> what are your thoughts on it, Steve? So... I'd like to hear your, your opinion on it. So we built it on a flat surface, clamped down. There's no diagonal wobble on bottom. And there's no diagonal wobble on top. Like it's, it's real, like, I mean, compared to the builds I've done, this is real good. But then when we go on its sides, there's some wobble. And it's again, diagonally, it's a one millimeter difference. I think if it were me, <laughs> I'd say that it's fine. It's probably better than most of the other printer builds I've done. But I, what do you think? Post the adjuster in context and live streams. Okay, sick. I'll take a look at that then, Delmar. I'm pretty sure it's related to what I saw when I was looking up the twisted. Do you, oh, maybe this isn't it. Monkey mash, let's try it in. Okay, but yeah. No, 
rapidity, adjusting target or gantry extrusion height. Oh, cool. Okay. Um, how are the diagonals on the sides? Oh, okay, I've only done top diagonal. Let's see. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's a little too short. Um, we're, okay, here it is. So I can only, I don't have, <laughs> I can't measure exact. This, you, this is the longest metric uh, ruler that I have, and it, it's only to 600 millimeters. So I, I don't have, I need to get a metric tape measure is what I need to do. Um, so I don't have any good way of measuring the diagonals on the side. So it's one millimeter on top. At this size, I wouldn't stress it. Uh, turning it over a bunch of times during build will flex it a bit anyway. Yeah, I think so too. Squeeze along diagonal, full send. Tape smaller and larger together. I guess I could do, I can do this diagonal. So the lower diagonal from the Y. So this is... This. So we're looking at 534. 534 in that way. Ah, shit. Go this way. Turn in the corner. Five thirty four. The other side is like a little. Over, I mean, I'd say it's about a millimeter difference. It's probably five thirty five and some change, not quite five thirty six. So I, I mean, it seems. I mean, that's only two squares, I suppose. Um, but roughly a mil. <clears throat> Why metric use a regular tape measure? Could do that. I do have regular tape measure. Let's see. Okay, so we're at 26 and a half. 26 and a half. It doesn't look that off to me, guys. Like, I mean, we're talking like hairs. I know that looking at it like wait where'd the wobble go oh okay the wobble's in this way so there's definitely wobble like this direction there's you can i mean clearly oh i'm kind of exaggerating it a bit let me go down here you can see it moving a little bit but it, it looks like it's it's not very far off i think i think we're gonna keep it <laughs> i think we're just gonna leave it as this <laughs> top and bottom are flat and again loose like i I don't know what else we could do. Like, there's been quite, there's been a few times where I've been really anal about a build and I've taken everything apart and I've tried putting it back together. And the results I've gotten after all that effort are actually worse than what I had just started with. And I can't get it back to what I had at originally. So I think we're going to just run with it. Completely unrelated. I hope you don't get mad. I jumped to another stream. <laughs> Not at all. We're going to call it here. I'm, um, I'm going to run to dinner pretty soon here. Uh, here's your range to music. Or the drink. We're going to simply have all your lyrics. Go online. Track. Yeah, I think we're going to leave it. Home Depot sells a little six foot, uh, two meter Milwaukee tape measure. I should probably get it. Post a cheap measure tape. Yeah, I'll, I'll order one. I haven't needed it. Again, we've been building B0s. <laughs> so, did you do the giveaway? Oh my God. Yes, John. Hours ago. So. I mean, in the end, I'm pretty happy with where we're at. Um, the biggest hurdle was one, me learning how to use one, two, three blocks and remembering uh, remembering how to clamp things like we did on the 2.4. Although now I think we have a really good system. And then it, it made me question myself when it was rising up, when it ended up being that there was again, some metal from where they punched the holes through or they drilled the holes through 
and that was causing her issues. So aside from that, which I need to tell them, I'll reach out and say, hey. And then they also should include the jigs. Uh, those jigs should come in every kit. So that way, again, if they're selling this as a thing where someone maybe doesn't have a printer or uh, I guess you don't have to print an ABS, but if you're selling a kit like this as all the parts you'll need to build this thing, it needs, it needs those jigs, so. Uh, there's always string. That's true. I, it's just a true. You do a 300 key try and you need a metric tape. Rat rig, it's a requirement. Yeah, you're, I'll, I'll order one, Delmar. Uh, check for rail jigs as well. Yeah, good good call. I put those out in the garage, the other box, so. Are the extreme, are the, um, the rail sizes are the same as the 2.4? Because the X is the largest. I think, like, as long as I have the ones for the 2.4, it should be good, right? I'll double check regardless, so. Anyways, I think we're going to call it. Um, Ikea has a nice little metric tape measure. We don't have Ikea's in Idaho. It's one of the worst, like, I, I love, since we moved here, I've enjoyed it immensely. Like, there's less people, there's a lot of outdoorsy stuff, but there's no Ikea's and it breaks my heart. So. Alrighty, I'm going to call it. We got the frame done. I was hoping we'd get more done, but all things considered, I'm happy that we got this done. Uh, we're at least doing one more stream on the Trident before we take a break, which is next week. Um, possibly two, it depends. I got to talk to Steve and figure out what's going on with things. But uh, let's see what our, let's set a goal for next week. So we've got AB drive and idlers, which should be, I think, identical, near identical to the 2.4, which should be fresh in my memory. Um, so let's see. I can also do the heat inserts prior to next week's stream. So that might help speed things up a little bit. Let's see, do, 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 AB idlers, do, 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 do. And then we've got y-axis. Okay, we're at least doing A, B, and y-axis next week. I don't know if we'll do Z, but we'll do at least do A, B, and y-axis. Uh, but is it your own private one? Ikea? We have like three Ikeas in town, and the biggest one in the country is one of them. That's amazing. I love Ikea. One, my mom is from Sweden, and I was raised on her, like, Swedish meatballs and... Uh, she'd always make these like pancakes and even her like even though she's made them from scratch a lot of my life as she like as I got older I guess uh, would go with their frozen meatballs because they're like still really damn good and so I miss I mean I just like I like to go into Ikea and walking around but the food court with the uh, Swedish meatballs and the french fries and or mashed potato with lingonberry and their super yummy like fruit sodas oh god uh, do you have a heat? Do you have a heat insert press of some sort? I hear they're all the rage. I don't. Um, I'm not really a big fan. Like I, I, I could see if you're running some sort of like production line, if you have a product and it's just like, you know, that's maybe quicker. But for one build every month and a half or two months, it, it just doesn't. It seems like an unnecessary uh, thing. Like I, I use this way overly fancy soldering iron. Um, but it has this like sort of proprietary tip that works incredibly well for um, heat inserts. And so, yeah, for me, I, I just, I've, I've been using this for years and I, I it's like second nature to me. I, I'm not, not, I have nothing against them. Like if someone likes it, then that's fine. You know, right, whatever works best for you, there's nothing wrong with that. But for me personally, I just, it, it would be an extra thing that I would have. I would use it for that time I got it and then it would sit on the shelf like so many other tools. So, yeah. I was raised in Ikea. Yeah, you know, Ikea has a little kid's play place. I spent many a weekends uh, being dropped off there. AB and Rails. Uh, Ikea is a, just a short nine hour trip. No, jeez. Is there, there's one in Portland, Ted? There's one in, uh, where's, there's one in Utah? Where's, hold on, let me quick look. Really quick here. There's a service, like for if you want to buy furniture, there's a company in Idaho that, will buy it out of state and import it uh, for like, uh, uh, you know, markup, of course. Okay, the closest Ikea. Now, why does it think I'm in California? I don't know. I don't know where state. Uh, it's taking me all the way down to Los Angeles, so I don't, I don't know where. That's weird. It's not showing me any other states. <clears throat> Correction, five hours to Portland, eight to Seattle, Ikea. Smallland, yeah, that's what it's called. How does the cyborg compare to an LDO kit? Uh, it's too early to say. 
Um, the the extrusions don't seem as high quality as LDO's extrusions. Um, I like their chrome color on this. Like, I think it's fun. Uh, but I've, I've already seen uh, some scratching, especially on the ends of the extrusions. And uh, we had two that didn't have the little metal inserts from where they punched through or drilled through, punched out. And yeah, it looks like maybe I did scratch them with my uh, blocks, actually. So yeah, I don't think the anodization is is as good as LDOs. Um, that's the only complaint comparison I have so far. The one thing I do think so far that's better than LDO's kit is um, this. The hardware all comes in this beautiful little tackle box and it also has nice pictures of everything labeled. So that way, if you're like me and you're kind of a all over the place kind of person, you can keep things nice and organized. For the LDO builds, I designed these little organizers for them, which work fine, but it's an extra thing. And um, I really like this. So yeah, I don't really have, I don't have much, too much yet. Uh, so we looked through the kit earlier and it looked nice. Uh, bad QC, maybe. Uh, I mean, I'm, I will definitely let them know uh, LDO, from my experience with LDO, LDO probably has better QC. That being said, um, I I have seen quite a bit about uh, imperfect imperfect extrusions from LDO. So I my I have got experience with the switch wire, a V zero, and the two point four, and some of the two point four extrusions seemed a little not perfect, but I don't know. So I, yeah, I, I really don't know. I'm asking because I'm buying a 300 Trident at work for work and it'd be worth waiting for West 3 to get their Trident kit or buy the Cyborg supplement with their printed parts. Yeah, I don't know, Aurora. Um, I don't want to give you a definitive answer. I mean, looking at the stuff that came in this kit, it looks nice. Like, the, I think that the biggest question marks will be the orange pie. Orange pie, I've, I've, I've heard one good and one bad and a couple so-sos. Um, I don't think there's anything else really that's been super so we'll see yeah I come back in some streams and we'll see um print some of the Steve's I did print out I do have a hex tray um I threw on one of the high flow I think it was just a 0.8 uh Revo high flow and uh I did print it out it turned out not bad um the the issue I had is I went from a 0.4 to that 0.8 high flow and I didn't adjust my Z, um, it was a manual level bed, and I didn't adjust my Z, so like first layer was way too close. So I sort of adjusted on the fly, but I mean, functionally it's nice and the sides look really good. Um, well, yeah, it's been handy. It's been, a, it's a great catch-all tray. I've been throwing like assorted things that I find on my desk in there. So anyways, I'm gonna end it again. Today's the last day that my sister-in-law is staying with us. And so we're gonna grab some food and then I probably will be editing some stuff later on, but a pretty fun stream all in all. It was nice looking through all of the parts that came in the kit. I'm excited to continue again next week. We'll definitely be doing Trident Build again. And then the following week, it's going to depend heavily on uh, what Steve and I have got in the mail and what we've sort of mapped out. And we're going to, Steve and I are going to chat this Saturday and that should give us a better idea, I think, of kind of what the game plan is. And so when I've got that info, I will share, uh, definitely share with everybody. So thank you all. Thank you everybody for hanging out. Hope you have a wonderful night. Um, thank you for everyone that liked and hung out in any way or lurked. Uh, there was also a ton of gifted gifted memberships at the beginning. So everyone that, uh, you know, gifted memberships, thank you very much or supported in any way that you can. I appreciate you all. And uh, I think that's all I've got. That's it. All right, stay safe, everyone. Have a great night or day. Talk to you later.